All right. Let's see if I get this set right. Sorry. <laughs> it is eight o'clock Eastern time. Um, just going to go through some Q and A tonight. Talk about some either past, recent projects or some future projects that we got going on. Um, we will be going back and working on Lance's bus to finish that up, uh, and then also on that uh, silver, pre war silver sides too. So we'll be heading back there to finish that one, but that won't be until after our um, Minnesota trip that we're getting ready to leave for Thursday. So thir Thursday, we're heading up to Minnesota, and we're going to be working uh, for some, on some of the buses for the bus boys up there. So Stan. Uh, Stan has owns more buses than anybody I know. Uh, I don't. I can't think of anybody else that owns more buses than Stan. Um, they have like the largest vintage bus collection that, that I'm aware of. So we're gonna go up there. I'll work with my buddy Phil on some buses. Um, I don't remember what we're doing. Some 671s, uh, probably like old looks is my guess is what we're working on, or maybe like a 4104, something along those lines. So, but it's 671 stuff. We're getting two 671s running. Uh, they're going to go in buses. I'm not sure if we're putting them in or if we're just repairing them in buses or not. Can you hear me okay tonight? Is everything sound okay? Look okay? I'm um, just using the Wi-Fi at home, so that should should be coming through good. Uh, Kelly's going to try to read some of the questions as they come up here. Um, if anybody has any questions on anything. You're saying all good. Have you ever installed a Shepard power steering conversion? Uh, I have not. I've worked on them, but I've never done the, the complete installation on anything before. When are you heading to Arizona? Oh, I don't know. That's... That, that'll be included in our trip after Minnesota. Yeah, after Minnesota, after we get Lance, the 4104, the couple things we got to yeah, fix we'll up. Yeah, down to Tennessee, then down into Atlanta, Louisiana, 41. Texas, and then across Arizona. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be we'll, down there. We'll be making it that way. It'll be before Christmas, right? Yes. Before Christmas. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Did you go to school to learn how to fix buses? Uh, there is a video called How Did I Become the Bus Grease Monkey? I think it's right on. If you just click right on my channel, it'll take you and tell you all that information. Um, no, I did not. Okay. So what about the past project? Are you going back to finish? Yeah, I just said both. Both of those were What going. are you? What are we going to go back and finish on them? Well, we're going to get that. them, yeah. The 4101, we're going to get back on the road again, so... Uh, we got to get it driving and everything, so we don't even know if it has a good clutch in it at this point. Um, and yeah, they're going to be changing the leaf springs and all that kind the of stuff. But isn't in yet. the radiator's not back in. We had we had to fab we have to refab the mount for the radiator, um, and then all the hoses for that. Um, there was there was a good day, one to two days of work to get it ready. I think to 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 start driving it again. And you need something for the tires, didn't you? Need oh, we need some, more, some wheel studs that we got to find the wheel studs for it. Yeah, so we got to pull the hubs back off and replace a couple studs that were broken or stripped out. They take a very weird stud. Okay, let's just jump down in here just a second. Do we have to set injector timings when installing a head on a 271. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, because if it, if the old head is, is a different thickness or whatever, then the, everything's off. The, the uh, Yeah, you ha you absolutely have to reset. Every time you even you take a head off, put it back on, you need to recheck it. And then someone's asking if uh, you fancy coming to the UK and working. <laughs> I probably don't know how to work on any of those buses Newland over there. Olympian, that's what it says. Yeah, I, if it doesn't have a Detroit in it, right, you know. I mean, some of the other systems may, might be the same, but... Um, I did. We 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 vacationed over there, and and I love it over there. It's it's awesome. But maybe sometime. How many miles do you travel every month? Oh gosh, uh, I don't know. A lot. Um, last month was. Well, the last two months we probably did twelve thousand miles. Yeah, by the time we went all the way out to the west coast and back. Do you drive your bus around Indianapolis? Really would like to see it. Um, yeah, I don't really drive around Indy much because when I'm home, I'm taking care of it. Like today, um, we did a whole bunch of projects on the bus itself. Uh, we tore out part of a wall behind the kitchen cabinet and put, added another kitchen cabinet to it. Um, we needed more storage space and stuff. You know, originally we weren't living in it full time when I did the conversion. So, um, I didn't need as much kitchen cabinet space and storage, that kind of thing. So we added another cabinet to it. 
Um, and then we put some uh, wood paneling up on one of the walls in there, um, like a reclaimed wood kind of stuff. And then uh, we got a new chair for in there. We pulled the couch out. We're putting another couch in. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get the couch. I was going to be installing this thing today, this uh, another cell phone booster that we got. Uh, this one's actually for an RV, so it's more of a permanent mount with a larger antenna for the roof and stuff. Uh, but it rained and stormed all day today. And since I got to get up on the roof of the bus, I didn't want to be doing that in there. Uh, and getting the couch in, we should probably film it because I think it's going to be pretty hysterical because uh, it's going to be tight. Uh, you know, the, the doorway is only, I, I posted the dimensions, but it's like 20, 24 inches or something like that wide. And, you know, the couch is 39 by 36 or something. But if you get it twisted just right and you go in and you curve it and pivot and it goes in. The new couch I want is a couple inches wider than the old couch. It's a couple, yeah, a couple inches wider than the one we took out. That was a pretty tight fit. But that measurement is with the legs on it. And we took the one out today with the legs on it still. So I think it's going to fit. But, um, you know, I did my best with the tape measure measuring and make sure it was going to fit. But it, it it's, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> But I really like the couch. She likes the couch, so we'll get it to fit. Turbo or not turbo? Uh, I mean, turbo. It's going to get turboed, but I just went. I don't know. Sometime within the next year, that was my plan. When I when I did the engine rebuild, I said within a year, I would I would get ready for turbo. How much does the help get? <laughs> uh, the, the, the help is what exactly what they are. They're volunteers, so they're out there learning and having fun. Yeah, um, there's, there's no, no pay for that. Uh, they just get to hang out with us, and they're always having a good time, though. Would, will you be changing the leaf springs on the silver sides? No, I will not be doing the silver sides, uh, the leaf springs on the silver sides. That's a, for a spring shop to do. Um, that's just too much work. And, and you know, they have, they'll be able to pull it in there and, and just make new springs or whatever. whatever. I assume they're going to make all new springs for it. I don't think they're going to just replace the broken ones, but there's broken springs on both sides of the front. And that one side is really, really bad. What is your next big tool purchase? Uh, I don't really have a big tool purchase. I got new tools coming every day. I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to remove about 500 pounds of tools off the bus while we're home now. Things that I know I'm not going to need for this trip. And then I keep getting um, new tools. Like I got like uh, tap sockets. That's something that I hadn't had in the bus that I really needed. Uh, and then I had to get a couple, um, I got some thread chasers. I didn't have those. I was just using my taps for that. Um, I can't remember what else I just got. Oh, I got a new spanner wrench uh, for, for doing the hubs. Um, I don't remember. I just keep getting all kinds of new tools, uh, everything. But I'm, I'm going to take, uh, I'm not going to need my engine hoist for this trip. So I'm taking that off. So that'll free up some weight. I'm going to take the transmission jack out of there because I won't be planning on removing any transmissions on this trip. Um, I for, oh, I'm going to take my clutch out of there. I've been carrying around a spare brand new clutch for my bus, but my clutch has been doing real good. So I'm going to pull that out of there, and if I need it, then I'll have it shipped to me. But that's like, you know, 250 pounds of extra weight that I do not need in there right now. Are you going to get some good outside drive-by videos of Lenny before you quiet him down? Probably not. Um, we'll see. Uh, that's going to be, what is today's Monday? Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to see Chris over at Carter's. So if you don't subscribe to him already, Carter's Garage. Mm -hmm. And um, it should come up for you if you search for that. Um, but yeah, he's going to change that and add another, he, we'll see how quiet it gets. It's another glass pack that we're adding, but it, it's that big one that we were originally gonna add. So it's much, you know, it's four foot long. So uh, considering the other thing we had was only 10 inches long, I think is what it was. Uh, it should be pretty good. Okay, um, this one is, sorry if you've already answered this. Uh, ever had a client where you drove a great distance, walk into the site, saw the bus, and then basically said, forget it, this is too far gone? No. Um, I mean, it has to be pretty far gone for me to say that. Um, I know a lot of people on that last bus were like, oh, that thing just needs to be scrapped or whatever. You know, they were looking at that motor mount and like, oh, that's just junk. You know, that was really two days, two and a half days worth of labor to do that. And that's not worth scrapping a bus for, for two and a half days worth of labor and $700 worth of parts. Uh, well, not including the nuts and bolts. So maybe he was $850 into it uh, plus the labor on that. The total labor bill on that job right now was like six grand. So, um, He's that's, still, that's, between you and Tyler. that's yeah, that's me and Tyler's uh, fees for that. So, um, you know, that's a lot of work that we got done on that thing, you know, the week that we were there and uh, another, like I said, another few days and, and nothing's going to be on the road. Um, is 
Is that all you work on is the two-stroke Detroits in the buses, or do you ever work on semi-trucks with two-stroke diesels? Yeah, I'll work, I'll work on anything that has a mechanical um, Detroit diesel in it, uh, two-stroke. So either a 71 series or a 92 series. I, I don't work on any of the electronic stuff. So if it's a D-deck or whatever, I don't do it. Uh, obviously, I work on trucks, boats, uh, cranes, what, what, you know, whatever has that two-stroke stuff in it. Um, I love working on, on anything, a generator, it doesn't matter, to, as long as it's a mechanical two-stroke on it. Uh, I had a six, I had 612V in the pumping equipment. Do they use that in any big rigs? Um, a, 12, a 12V71, is that what, I, I guess maybe that's, that's what I was asking. Yeah, I mean, well, some, some semis had that, and then some buses had it too. Um, some, a lot of boats had it, things like that. Any plans to come down to Georgia? We don't have anybody in Georgia on our list right now. No, but we'll be, after we come back from the West Coast, I'm sure we're going to head down to Florida. So after the first year, we'll head to Florida. So yeah. if somebody needs somebody, something in Georgia, it would be after the first of the year. Can you hear her good when she talks? I don't have to repeat what she says. I'm assuming they can. Any leads on a block heater for winter? Um, I mean, I use a block heater, so I, if somebody's looking for one, is that what they're saying? Where to get one? Um, power line components, I assume, would have it. Um, just, I would just Google Detroit diesel block heater. There's a few different styles. It depends on where you're mounting it at in there. Uh, those little ones that are like the circulating heat ones that you like just hook on a coolant line, like cats make them and stuff like that, those aren't really good. Uh, you need to get the kind that actually goes inside the block. Kind of looks like a little water heater type element that goes, it actually curls inside the block. Um, that's, that's the kind that you want to have. And then it really gets, gets them warm inside there. That other kind, I've never had really good luck with that. Uh, nothing wrong with like the cats, like the K A T Z, I think is how it's spelled. Um, uh, they have like a magnetic oil pan one that you can use as a, as an additional one to keep the oil warm because otherwise the, the coolant ones keep the coolant good, but the oil down in the bottom of the pan does not get warm. And you still got that 40 weight oil at 30 degrees is pretty thick. So I, I, I'm, I like having those magnetic, magnetic oil pan heaters to use in addition to a regular engine block warmer, uh, just to keep that oil a little bit warm down there too on the, when it's really cold. Okay. Are you coming to Michigan anytime soon? Would like to work with you and learn more. Yeah, Michigan won't be till next year. Um, we've already been there this year. A couple months ago. Yeah. Will you be in North Carolina anytime soon? Got a 671 in a boat. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it won't be till next year. I mean, my schedule is just crazy. Um, there's certain clients that I have to get to, people I've been promising to get to. And um, if, if somebody happens to be along the way, I can kind of squeeze it in here or there, but uh, I, I can't make any promises. We still have a uh, uh, Mark's bus in North Carolina that I'm trying to get Tyler to go out and rebuild that uh, AV92 in. Uh, hopefully within the next month, uh, but that's that's going to be Tyler, not me, because I'm going to be heading the other direction. But North Carolina could potentially be sometime after the first of the year. It, it could it, be. It depends on what kind of route we have. Uh, uh, someone says, got a truck for you, a 1959 Chevy Apache. I have a 350 restored to replace the 235 stock shot, bring the trailer and haul it home. Yeah, I don't need Apache. Tyler just sold his Apache last year. Tyler I, might like it. Yeah, no, he doesn't want another one. What are the biggest pain points on the major bus brands uh, slash lines? Eagles rust areas as an example. Uh, well, I mean, anything on an Eagle is you got to really look for rust. So look down the sides, make sure that it's not wavy. Look at the mounts for the uh, torch elastic suspension, make sure that they're good and solid. Uh, I mean, anything that's steel on there, you just really, it's, it's a steel tubular, square tubular construction on it. And any kind of thing up in the wheel wells, anywhere you think road salt would get, that's where you really got to look. Uh, and I've seen some that are horrible, that they, they look pretty good, but but they're not. But all of them, you just got to you got to look for stuff like that. I mean that that one this week we saw that broken motor mount. I mean I was concerned, but I didn't. It wasn't anything like oh that's this is junk. I mean you just got to whatever the most everything is fixable on a bus. There's nothing that's for the most part that's not. But if it's been in an accident or something like that, that would be something you got to watch out for too. Okay. And I assume that you're going in order with the questions. Is that? Yeah, I'm trying, trying to. to. A lot of people are saying hello, so I'm sorry that I'm not mentioning everybody. <laughs> kind of hard. 
on my screen keep doing Yeah, if we job. just keep saying hello to everybody, we'll say hello the whole time. So, but thank uh, you. We appreciate it. Uh, one person in the just has a comment. Would like you to cover more about air on the bus brakes, relays, other... So I don't know what you have coming up that you could potentially... Really, uh, if you want to learn something about air brakes or the air systems, like go to ben Bendix has tons of really good videos online that you can watch and learn about that. And most of that stuff is pretty much so the same as what's on your buses. Um, uh, the, the Bendix stuff is, is very informational and educational. Okay, and this one just said, just got on here. Did you mention when you're going to Minnesota? Uh, I leave on Thursday. We leave on Thursday. We'll be there two weeks. <laughs> we'll be there two two weeks and two days is what it looks like because we got we're working for the bus boys uh, up there, which is in Minneapolis area. I believe it's Bloomington. Bloom Bloomington, right. and then uh, Taylor has a another pre-war Silver Sides that I'm going to work on for a couple days uh, up there, and then uh, I don't have any other clients scheduled. I just, I just got to get out of there before winter hits. I, I don't want to get, I don't want to drive my bus in snow. It's, it's not ready for snow. I don't have a really good defroster. You know, my windshield wipers work like crap. Um, I just, I don't want to, and it's cold and I don't want the salt and all that stuff on my bus. So, uh, I'm, and we don't want our pipes to freeze. And yeah, we don't want our pipes to freeze. We don't have, you know, if we're plugged in somewhere, nothing's going to freeze up on there, but you know, if I'm driving home or, you know, and it's 20 below, that's going to suck. It's, I don't want to do that. And I just want to say I apologize if I do miss somebody's question. If I, you know, I've gone past it, maybe repost it so I don't miss anybody. And I'm not doing it on purpose. No, unless um, you just don't like you. <laughs> um, hi, Scott. For a person who can do their own mechanical work, which bus would you go uh, with for first diesel coach? A 4104 or a 4106? Um, they're, considering that, said, they're saying considering they've both been fairly well maintained. They're both real similar. Um, you know, you're going to probably like the power of the 4106 better, but uh, a lot of things are improved on um, the 4106. Airbags are easier to change. Uh, you know, they, I mean, they made some improvements on it. The windows are bigger. The, um, but I, I myself like the looks of the 4104 better. I like that little bit older styling, the curved back. Um, for me, the real deal breaker was if somebody had caps on it or something, I would probably choose the one that didn't have the caps. I don't like the fiberglass caps when they put them on there. So it's still got round headlights, not square headlights. That would be the stuff, the more aesthetic stuff. I wouldn't be so worried about the other things. Uh, Scott, what did you do with the rear end on the 41 silver size as to changing the gear oil? Did you flush it out? Uh, we haven't yet, um, but he's got the gear oil to do that. What's better, block cross plug heater or an inline hose heater? Uh, block, uh, the kind, the, the plug that goes into the block, yes. Did you get the couch picked out? Yeah, she picked it out from uh, Home Goods. Is that what's at what home? It? At home, so it's called at home. Yeah. Uh, huge store, tons of cool stuff in there. It was. It's hard to pick one. We bought a chair in there too. We're gonna take that chair back and get a different chair. We didn't like the way it looked in the bus. I love the chair though. Have you ever visited the Greyhound Museum in Hitting? Yeah, we did a rally. I actually have a video tour from last year from the rally that was there when we were up there last year. Um, it was it was cool. Uh, it's a neat place where Greyhound started up in Hibbing, Minnesota, way up there. I'm not going there on this trip. That's going to be too far north, and it's going to definitely be cold up there. You've had a lot of comments about your hair, and then someone just said, wow, shaved Scott. Oh, yeah. I say wow, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually shave when I'm on the bus, so now that we're home, I shaved. Sorry, intermission while she's Sorry. reading. <laughs> is your back feeling better? No, my back is killing me. I don't know what's going on. Um, something in my upper back when I woke up this morning. Um, my Patreons know about it, but um, actually it happened yesterday morning when I woke up. My arms were completely numb, like both arms, and my hands just hurt so bad. And it's like a pinched nerve between my shoulder blades or something, and um, my hands just hurt so, so bad. It was, I couldn't sleep because of it, and then, yeah, it hurt, hurt all day, and I don't know what's going on. I didn't do anything to hurt it. I just woke up that way. Did your Jakes come in? No, I got to find out where they're at because he told me he was sending them to me and now I thought they'd be here when I got home and they're not. Um, I have to find out about that. Why not aluminum wheels? Because then I got to put all new studs in and that's like 
four or 500 bucks for all the new wheel studs to go in there, plus a couple days worth of work to do all that. And, and then plus buying the, the rims are another, you know, $150, $200 a piece, then having my tires swapped over to them and um, I'll, to save 60 pounds a tire or 40 pounds a tire. I, I, my bus came with steel wheels. I like steel, it's just fine. Aluminum cracks and you gotta polish them and screw that. Do you ever let your wife drive the bus? No, but she's gonna learn. We're gonna, we'll, we'll have a video day where Kelly learns to drive the bus. She's shaking her head no, but it's gonna happen. When you put in power steering. When I put in power steering, okay. Sorry, it just like jumped way ahead. Sorry. I don't know why it just jumped like over. Her, her screen, the thing just jumped way ahead, so now she's trying to go back to where she was at. I don't want to miss she's anybody. She's trying not to miss anybody's questions, but that's... Uh, so maybe when that happens again, I'll just... If I see something on the screen, I'll answer a question that's on the screen while you're looking. Are you ready to go yet? Go ahead. 2050. Well, I don't see anything on my screen right now, though. Okay, I'm getting back. Did Lance's bus get finished up yet? No, we'll be going back to, to finish working on that. He's got the guy doing some welding and getting some stuff ready, but uh, in about three weeks, three and a half weeks, we should be down there by Lance getting that thing finished up. Someone says, lives in St. Louis, Michigan. Didn't know there was a St. Louis, Michigan. Uh, would like to come down and work with you guys. Is that possible? When we're where? I don't know when. I mean, yeah, I mean, anybody's welcome anytime. Just let me know. Um, we don't really have anything going on here in Indy, but we're, when we're in Minnesota, or we'll, be, we'll be back in Ohio for um, Belpre, Ohio, working on that pre-war silver sides. Anybody's welcome to come come help out. The, 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 the free labor is nice for the bus owner because a lot of stuff gets done and uh, a lot of it's grunt work. So it's, you know, cleaning parts or, you know, whatever. It's not hard. Someone says, if all else fails, remove the windshield and slip the sofa right in. We already said that. <laughs> yeah, that was that's an option, uh, you know, but that's... Could be a pain. They said just kidding, but... Yeah, no, that's how you do it. That's how a lot of people have to do it um, for RVs. To, you got to pull the windshield out and get, get stuff in. Um, I really don't want to have to do that because it is a complete pain in the ass. Uh, the last time I had replaced the windshield, it probably took me six or eight hours and it's cold outside. And I really, it's not worth, I don't want to do that. We'll go without for a while. Yeah. If that was the you know end end all decision, we would pull the windshield out and put it in. But we would actually schedule time to do that. And I'd probably order new rubber. And oh, I have I think I have another set of brand new. Couch rubber. would come sit in the house till it was ready for. It. Yeah. Um, how old does a bus have to be to excite you? <laughs> well, that's a very good question. Um, I mean, I, I love I love the old stuff. So any anything pre nineteen sixty is probably my favorite. Um, after that, I still like them. I'm not saying I don't like them. Um, my first bus was a 61. I love fish bowls too, but there's something about an old look and a new look. The old look is just so cool. And, uh, that I just, I just like the old, old stuff, but that's just my own per that people are like, you know, why don't you get a Prevo or get something new for me to drive around? And, uh, no, I love the silver sides. It's small, but I love that bus. And I, I just think it, there's nothing better looking. Uh, maybe a scenic cruiser is better looking, but they're so big and, they're not real practical on the inside to do a conversion with the raised floors on the side and everything. If you hear loud booms, that's the St. Bernard's upstairs. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and a lot more maintenance and you know, you got, you know, you got a lot, you know, a tag axle and more wheels and everything's just, uh, I like the simplicity of just having, you know, six tires and, you know, two axles. And uh, for, for me, it's, it's perfect. And I'm not going to get a trailer to pull a bunch of tools around. I can carry whatever I carry. Air brakes is converting to a dual circuit system a thing for a vintage bus? Not really. No. I mean, it can, we at least converted them to, like on mine, converted it to spring brake. Um, so that's a whole nother, you know, uh, step up from there. But yeah, a dual system, there's no need for that. You've got the spring. Um, as I learned this year when I, when I lost air pressure and uh, had a, an airline fitting blow apart, that was a... Uh, um, push to connect fitting it just completely came into two pieces while I was driving down the interstate um, and had to pull off uh, as I lost all my air pressure and the spring brakes applied and it was right where the merging the there was no shoulder anymore two two lanes were merging from another expressway onto that expressway as I was coming to a stop um, and uh, hindsight I would have got back on the throttle hard against the brakes 
uh, to pick up some speed, and uh, that, that's not what I did. Um, I was I was hyper focused on stopping, you know, not having air and making sure that I needed to stop instead of giving on the throttle. That was like just complete opposite of what my brain was saying to do. Um, and we did get rear ended on that one, and I had video of it up for a little bit, but I was advised to take it down. Um, it didn't cause any damage to my bus. It was like twelve hundred or something like that dollars damage to the car that hit us behind. He hit my trailer hitch or whatever. Um, but yeah, that air fitting blew apart. Boom! You just heard this really loud air escaping noise. The low air alarm came on, but I didn't. I knew it already. What happened before that thing even came on? As the brake started to apply, I was getting over to the shoulder, thinking, "Thank God I have spring brakes. Thank God I have spring brakes." And then that the shoulder ended immediately as two lanes merged into. From, this was in Jacksonville. Florida. So a major, I don't remember what it was, but we're on 95 or 75, I-75, I think it was. Um, yeah. And again, if that ever happens to you, remember you can overpower your brakes by getting on the throttle a little bit and I wouldn't have slowed as much. And there wasn't heavy traffic. I was just, like I said, I was hyper-focused on that. It's going to stop. I need to get over because it's going to stop. Thank God I had spring brakes because otherwise I would have just kept on rolling. Are there any GM buses having standard transmissions with more than four gears? No, G GM, um, yes. Uh, Scenic Cruisers, you can put whatever you want in it because that's a T drive. Any of the V drive buses, you're really limited. Uh, you either have a four speed manual or you have a three speed automatic, which would be like a V730. Uh, there is no other options for the V drive GM stuff, which might be a reason why some of you might not want a GM, but you know, I'm going 70 miles an hour down the, the down the highway, so well, over 70, but 70-ish. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how fast people want me to go. That's that's pretty damn good, and I'm going. You know, I mean, out west there are high speed limits. Yeah, right? yeah, but I, I don't want to go much faster than that. So I, you know, yeah, it screams a little bit. I use a little more fuel, but I I like it. It's just we'll get it a little bit quieter, and it won't be so bad. Haven't seen you work on a scenic cruiser yet. What's your thought on them? Um, yeah, I've worked on several of them. There's several videos of them. If you just search my page for Scenic Cruiser. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, no, I love them. They're, they're really cool. I think they're the coolest looking buses. They look like my, my finger did. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just as far as maintenance and owning one, they're, you, they're, everything's multiplied. You know, the bigger the bus you have, the more money you spend. Um, I did see a, um, whatchamacallit, come through on here, Kelly. A, uh, did you see it on yours? What? The $2, uh, somebody did a um, super chat. So make sure you acknowledge them and, and their their question on that. That's not showing up on mine. Huh. I don't know how to pull. I'm sorry, and I'm touching the screen, but I don't know how to pull that back up. Oh my god. Do I need to log Hang in? Hang on, I can see here it is. Uh, nomadic tech. Uh, do I need to have a special license to drive a bus? Uh, if it's con if you if it's converted to an RV, no, there's no special license in most states. Uh, you should probably check with your state just to make sure. Um, but in my state and most states, no, if it's converted to an RV, you don't need any sp uh, special license. Just a regular driver's license will do it, even if it's over 26,000 pounds and has air brakes. In most states, you don't even need an air brake endorsement, uh, which I don't believe in. I think that you should have to have it, but there's a lot. Of, there's a few states that require it still. I think Texas is one of them. Even if it's an RV, but it has air brakes and it's over 26,000 pounds, I think you have to have an air brake endorsement for that. Was that the only one that... Just a second. What is? Have you got to a question about a plasma cutter yet? Uh, I didn't see it, but I may have missed it. So, well, I've, I've seen it pop up a couple times, but I know you're going in order, so I'm not trying to get it. So she's yeah. trying to go in order. So whoever is going off about the plasma cutter thing, um, I will ignore it if, if you don't knock it off or we'll take you I off there. That, I do see that down here now. So if she gets to it, she gets to it. You know, I, I saw it go by three times on there, but I was waiting for her to go in order, so... Have you been to my hometown, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? Okay, I'm sorry, it just totally. That's okay. Um, I haven't been. I haven't had my bus in Philly before, and I saw. I just saw it on another couple uh, super chats come in. Um, maybe that, that. Maybe that's why it's pushing. But regard three said, uh, "Thank you." So you're welcome. And then. Uh, is it Mitchell? Mitchell Jacobs. Uh, thanks. Love your channel. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, the, the super chat thing is just. That's a nice little feature. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. Okay. If you see anything else, go ahead, because it totally threw me off again when something came through. That's fine. Uh, and somebody just said, would I put an, uh, an automatic transmission in Lenny? Um, no, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I love having a stick shift. It's just, it's more fun to drive. And, you know, once, you know, 
uh, the only time it really sucks is when you're on a hill in really bad traffic. Uh, and that would be on a uphill in really bad traffic. I don't mind it on a downhill. Um, but yeah, it's, it's slightly more pain in the butt, but it's not. I mean, it's, I don't know. Some people just, God, if you don't like a stick, why would you want an automatic? You sound like Tyler. I know, but, well, I can see, like, people like Lance for his bus for being a commercial use. He does, it's a lot easier for him to hire a driver. He doesn't have to teach somebody to drive that non-synchronized thing. But if you know how to drive a non-synchronized transmission, manual transmission, um, why would you? I know that everything nowadays is, like, automatic, and it's just, but you want to be one with your machine. So you want to have, <laughs> Kelly's rolling her eyes at me. You're an idiot. <laughs> Um, and I, whatever the plasma, do I, I should add a plasma cutter to my thing. This is the one job that I needed a plasma cutter for. And how the hell would I have powered it out there? Um, I assume that most of them take 220. We didn't have 220 available out there. I don't, I don't have anything big enough to do that. So that, no, I, if he needs to hire, you know, somebody can hire, we can hire in somebody with a plasma cutter. Um, sorry, I, that's two questions away yet. So oh, sorry. I'm ready to. Sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. Um, if you had to upgrade your bus, what would you go for? Um, another silver sides. <laughs> yeah, I would. There's nothing out there that I would want different. I'd go newer. I'd go 48. <laughs> no, I want my bus. Yeah, no, I, I. If we if we had to pick something different, I would pick a scenic cruiser. If we had to pick something different. Uh, I'm not opposed to having an MC6. That that would be pretty cool. An MC6 with a 12V71. Your wife would win out. Uh, they're sexy too. I could, she could get used to it. <laughs> There's more room. <laughs> it's a lot wider. It's wider. It's taller. It's longer. Yeah, she. Underneath. All things that she likes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone's asking about, have you ever thought about pulling a trailer behind you? But you already answered that earlier, I think. Um, what's a good brand of tools for working on the bus? Here's the thing. When you need new tools, honestly, I, I have a lot of Harbor Freight tools. Number one, I don't want them ripped off from my bus. I have a lot of other nicer tools. And now that Harbor Freight has the new uh, icon line, um, I really think that's probably a good value for your for your dollar there. But uh, most of your car, if you work on cars and you get a bus, most of your tools are no longer going to be adequate. Everything is just bigger. Uh, you know, I mean, like for real, like a 10 millimeter, like everybody works on foreign cars now, like ten, everything's 10 millimeter. Everything on a bus is like nine sixteenths for like engine stuff usually. But then you're up to, you know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. You know, so, you know, the axle nuts are four inches and things like that. And you just need to, to keep doing you know, to keep adding stuff to it. And you got to kind of think about where you're spending your money. A lot of those tools you're only going to use a few times here and there. So it's worth it to buy a cheaper tool. If it's something you're going to use often and a lot, like having a really good, you know, socket set and really good wrench set, things that you use a lot, that's great. Buy, buy the nicer, pricier stuff. But the things you're only going to use, you know, a couple times a year, um, you know, some Amazon stuff or Harbor Freight or something, I, I'm completely fine with that. Do these old buses use shutter stats? If so, do you need any spares? Um, yeah, they use them, but most people they're in op or they've removed them. Uh, I have a couple of shutter stat parts here. I even have some shutter stat fluid here, um, which is really, really hard to find. Um, but yeah, it's a couple of the vintage guys, if they're going for a complete restoration on something, they'll add those back. Uh, so Stan would be a guy maybe to send that stuff to, uh, he, he warehouses a lot of parts and stuff too. So the bus boys collection up there. Um, if you're wanting to donate some parts or something like that, I'd hate to see the, anything go to a landfill or a scrapyard. So, you know, somebody like that, I think would take it and, and possibly use it again in the future on something. Cause when the, all their buses are seated coaches, uh, they, they bought a few things that are RV that I think they're just because they're really, really rare buses that they're going to try to convert or at least preserve them in the state that they're in. Okay. Do you have any customers in Oklahoma? I would like to come help and understand more about silver sides or scenic cruisers. Yeah, I don't. I think is there an Oklahoma on the list right now? Right now, I do not believe that there are. Okay. I, I go there a few times. I've been there, you know, five or six times in the Nothing last couple on the years. Top of my head. I know at least the next trip. Yeah, just be. just follow the channel, and I always announce where I'm heading to or whatever, and where I'm going to be at. I'm I don't try to hide any of that stuff. I'm I'm not concerned about that. So yeah, just just follow it and watch it, and you'll find out where we're at. But right now, I don't think we're going to be there for 
probably six months or more. Yeah. Is it just because your exhaust is much louder now, or do you think that you need an overdrive on your bus with all the highway driving you do? No, it's just, you're not used to hearing a two stroke. I think that's what it is. I'm doing 2,500-ish RPMs. Um, it just sounds, I mean, it's it's a screaming Jimmy. That's what they're called. That's what they, that's the noise they make, they, they go. And yeah, it's louder now. It's much, much louder now. Um, it's breathing better, it's running cooler. Um, you know, that, that exhaust was pretty restricted. You know, I had those two, two inch pipes coming out of it and now we're up to five inch diameter. Um, it's just, it's breathing better in and out with the four valve head, um, plus the, all the work that Joe did, and the stuff that Joe did to it, is, it. It's just, it's running great right now. Uh, what about mechanical Cummings? Yeah, I don't touch any of that stuff. I, I only work on the two stroke Detroit 71, 92 series mechanical, that's it. I don't. I don't even know what color a Cummins engine is. Like cats are yellow, Cummins, are they red? I, I don't even know, see, I know nothing. This, this just cracks me up at the comment. Can't tell if you're wearing makeup or you're just clean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have the fake guy liner stuff on today with the <laughs> grease and oil. I love name on here, drink whiskey and raise hell. Oh, nice, Kelly's a, Kelly likes whiskey. <laughs> Feel free to send us some. <laughs> Have a few or stop by and have a few. <laughs> have you fixed the annoying squeak yet? Um, yes and no. It's uh, it's better. Uh, it, it only, it's only happening when it's really cold out. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something to do with the temperature. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, we'll we'll work on it. it the The bus is eighty percent quieter than it used to be. When I used to travel by myself inside, there was all kinds of squeaks and rattles and stuff. And as I'm driving down the road, I'm like, "Damn, that's annoying. I don't know what's coming from." And and but now that Kelly goes with me, and she's very annoyed by noises like that, so she'll get up and go find where's that squeak? What's making that noise? What's making that rattle? And so she's completely eliminated, you know, ninety percent of the noise inside the bus within within the first you know six months of her travel with me. She's been able to narrow all that stuff down and, and eliminate it. Uh, it, it was very unfortunate that really loud squeak that we have is like right next to her. And part of it is like the foam insulation in the walls. Um, I had to change and put a new uh, 12 volt, like a USB plug in the wall there. And that rubs on that, some of that insulation. And it's that thing's kind of squeaky next to her. No, and then mostly it's the door, that, that door thing got really bad that I jammed that rag in there and it seems much better. But coming home, it was a little bit warmer and it wasn't squeaking like that. Then, yeah. So. Um, when are you going to Australia? I don't know. <laughs> we, have to, we have to catch up on our schedule. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't see how that's going to happen. It wouldn't be, there's no way it's going to happen until after the first of the year, if it, if it does happen. Uh, we really want to go there bad. Um, and we'd really love to visit Stu and, and maybe do a tune up on his engine or something. But, um, I, I just, people that I have to, you know, commit to and get things done, and get projects finished up before I could even do that. It's just, it's not on the radar right now. It's, it's a great idea and it could happen, but it's gonna be a little while. Okay, I don't, I don't know if people can hear me or not. One or two people say they can't, but other people are saying they can hear me just fine. Um, when are you coming to the Northeast? I don't know, um, at least six months probably. Uh, no, need, no sooner need, than that. We need to have several people up that way. Yeah, I had a, I had a trip scheduled out that way. We were there a, la a year ago. We were there. Uh, we went up New York and out that way, uh, Upper New York and Pennsylvania. But we have a couple people up more towards Maine and stuff. But they only want you if you have more people. To yeah, they don't want to pay the whole travel fee. I charge a dollar per mile. So if there's multiple people on the trip, so if I drive, you know, two hundred miles to one guy and two hundred to the next guy and two hundred to the next guy, that's great. And the last guy is only paying two hundred bucks. But if the two last time I had two guys in the middle drop out, so that you know they it, one sold their bus and the other one had health issues where he couldn't do it, so you know the one guy would have had to pay you know eight hundred dollars to get me out there, and he he didn't want to do that. So okay, um, someone's saying we need a moderator in here. I agree. <laughs> um, I don't know if next time can you add me as a moderator so I can yeah. air stuff on here then yeah because okay. I can't. I can click to hide some, but it's only going to hide them from me, not okay. everybody else. Um, hi, Scott. Uh, Tyler, will Lenny be getting power steering in the future? Yes, he's definitely getting power steering in the future. Um, uh, Gene, Gene's invited me to come out to his place and park uh, at his shop and do the power steering conversion out there. He's done it on several silver sides. Um, 
I just don't know when I can get the time to go out there and do that. Um, Hopefully that'll be in way. North Carolina as well. He's in Mill, Mill Spring, North Carolina. Maybe we can do that on our way back from Florida after the first of the year. Maybe I would Maybe. love. I want to get it done back. so bad. That'd be nice. I, I had to do it like a twelve point turn in Lance's uh, or in Bill's driveway when we we're working on Lance's bus, and it wiped me out. <laughs> If you see something pop up that's a question, go ahead, because I'm, I'm just running through people saying hello. It's going so fast, I can't even read, you know, by the time I start to read a sentence on there. Um, hey, Tyler. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, person, I know you need to make a living, but have you ever thought about having a tech seminar that bus owners can attend in mass? Yeah, uh, and actually, uh, Sage was mentioning, and I think somebody else on one of the, the live streams had mentioned too, doing like a bus rally where we let people work on their buses and and just get a group of people together and just get into our buses together and we're you know I can kind of walk around and tell them what they're working on or they can all try to fix certain things. I think that might be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, we just need to make sure that we have some place large enough. Yeah, because we did a we did a bus grease monkey rally like six years ago. I think it was now maybe. Um, and it was fun. Um, I, I've talked about it before, so. so maybe if, maybe if one of your viewers has property that's large enough. Yeah, I would. We'd, yeah, because a lot of campgrounds aren't going to want people tearing gonna want things work. apart. Yeah. So we, so yeah, we, we can't just show up somewhere and do that. We have to know where we're going and have permission to do something like that. Yeah. Otherwise, every day just watch a video is usually a little bit of a learning experience. I saw somebody say, what's your worst injury that you've had? Um, tor my foot slipping off the torque wrench. That was a good one. And it, you oh, know. You did that twice. two jobs in a row. <laughs> two jobs in a row. And the one time it fell off, hit me, and gave me a nice bruise with your <laughs> scrape down. <laughs> so the, you know, the 600-pound torque wrench, that, that can come back and get you sometimes. <laughs> um, and then uh, some of you will be very happy to know that I just, just bought a silicone uh, wedding ring to wear. So I'll take off my wedding ring and do that. And I did just see a super chat go by um, saying from William Oswalt saying, go Colts. Um, you know, unfortunately I have I love the Colts, but I have not been able to watch a single game all year. Uh, I watched the highlights from yesterday's game. That was pretty exciting, but I, I, I didn't even know until like three weeks into the season that Andrew Luck retired because we had been on the road and had no internet and we had no TV. like, yeah, no team. We were out at Burning Man and all that during the beginning of the season. I think it was, and I, I was completely shocked when I heard that. But yeah, we, we love the Colts. Do you work on mechanical Cummins diesel engines? Uh, no. Ty does Tyler? Ty Tyler does, yeah. Get a hold of Tyler. The scenic cruiser finger that I just saw something put, that was not even, that was barely an injury. It just looked really bad. <laughs> it hurt for like three cuss words and then, then it was just there. Are the front ends all the same on the scenic cruisers? Are the friends the same on all the scenic cruisers? I don't know. I, I've never seen anything different on there. And they all have power steering that I've worked on. Um, but I assume that's a conversion because that's it's usually Shepard that's on there. And I don't think that that wasn't even out then. So but Greyhound might have done that on all of them. I don't know. Are you going back to Lance and see if he's got his trans done? Yeah, we'll be going. Well, he's not going to get it done until we get down there and finish it. I don't think, you know, he's uh, th there's a few things for him to struggle on on that. So. Um, we'll, we'll be down there to help him though. It's just, it's be about three weeks, three and a half weeks. Does your 47 silver sides have a more modern design than the pre-war silver sides you just recently worked on? Yeah. Yeah. A couple, couple things are different on it. The, the rear end is different. Um, well the pre 500 and I think they want to like 536 or something like that. They, but typically as general, we just say the pre 500, um, is a lot more similar to that pre-war. And then after the 500 serial number, 530, whatever serial number in 47, they made some pretty significant changes to it um, for, you know, the, the front hubs are different. The rear hubs are different. The rear, complete rear axle is totally different. Um, there's a lot of little things that, that they improved on it. But yeah, so if, if you're looking at a pre 500, if you're looking at buying a silver size and it's pre 500, just make sure you know there are a few things that are harder to locate on those. Uh, they're not quite as common, but there's nothing bad about one or the other. They, and they still look just about the same. Uh, on hot summer days, the, the pre-war doesn't have that little vent that opens. There's a vent that opens up by the driver where it blow cold air right up your skirt. <laughs> You're wearing a skirt? If you're wearing a skirt. 
uh, when's the next time you're going to be in Oregon? Uh, at least a year. At, at, least. at least summer. Late, late summer. Yeah, I, I assume we'll go the out there. The last couple of years, it's been August, September-ish. If I get a chance, especially go out and see, visit Joe, Joe and Scott and... Um, Your sister. And my, my sister. <laughs> Can't forget Meg. Uh, I think it's chat. Just... Um, I, yeah, I saw so another just, super chat on there from... Kevin's here. Uh... Vote to leave the exhaust on Lenny the way it is. That, that's not going to happen. I, uh, as much as I love it and I smile and it's awesome, it is too damn loud. Just now, I love it. I, I don't think it's too loud for me, but it's too loud for everybody else in the world, and I don't want to do that to them. So when I drive through a small town or like when I was coming home the other night, late at night, I did. I feel I, I have a conscience, so I, it's too loud. Um, and your wife would quit traveling with you. And and. She would quit traveling with me. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew from the very minute that we put it on that there's no way it's gonna be able to stay on, but I had no time to change it back. We had to, we were leaving that next day to, or the day after that to go down to, to, the, to Blyville and uh, there was just no time to do it. So I said, you know, I'm gonna be with Tyler. Kelly's not gonna be with me. She wasn't supposed to be with us. I was just supposed to go down there, do that little thing down there with Lance for a couple days, uh, visit Sage for a couple days and then come back with Tyler. And then, you know, hey, Lance happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, it's not that I don't like the noise. The sounds like that, Scott always says that I have supersonic hearing. It just, she does. it annoys me for long periods of time. I can't, I can't take it. Yeah. I'd be Lots of things annoy her. It doesn't have to be sounds, but that just has to be one of the things that annoy her. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, George. He says, hope. To have you guys back to Jefferson City. Oh yes, George. I hope we make it back there too. Hope all's going well with you. Yeah, I saw George sent me. A, they tore down the buildings there, and the, so the buses survived the tearing down of the buildings around there, where the tornado had damaged them so bad. Okay, let me see what the next question. Uh, someone else just said they live. Oh, that's a repeat. If they're in St. Louis, would like to come down and work with us if that's uh, possible. Yeah, it won't, we won't be about that way. I mean, like, just watch the schedules, and anybody's welcome to come out. Just let me know ahead of time, and I'll give you the exact address where we're at. And always got to make sure it's okay with the the bus owner that other people come out. But most of them, again, it's it's less work that I'm going to do because you're doing stuff for me if you're taking off wheels and things like that. So it's nice. It saves them money. Does Tyler want a classic bus to work from as well? Um, he wants a scenic cruiser. He does. He's always wanted a scenic cruiser. Um, if we find the right one for him, you know, then, then we'll do that. But right now he doesn't have a place to park it. He's worried about that. He's still got like a year left on his lease on, on the home where he's, where he's at. Um, we're talking about maybe moving to Tennessee. And I think Tyler's talking about he'll move down there too. And maybe work for Lance a little bit down there too for the for the bus company for Lance. And so we'll, we'll see what happens. But he's going to have a bus in his future. It, it will happen. I just saw another super chat pop up on here from Snow Perfect. Um, my coochie's here. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, can you give location information periodically during your driving videos? Yes. Yeah, 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 we can. Some people hate the driving videos. It's very annoying to me that you hate it, especially when I like label the video driving video and then somebody posts, what's with the driving video? <laughs> like, hey, that's what it's called. I get annoyed with the driving videos sometimes. She does, especially when I'm like, hey, record this. This is really cool. <laughs> She's like, again? More? No. <laughs> it's usually, hey, check my uh, messages. Hey, hey. Put, put that down. Record this real quick. <laughs> hey, what did that say? Did you check my email? Hey, record this. <laughs> I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> she can do more than one thing at a time. <laughs> um, can you squeeze in a Missouri trip? Not for a long time, a year, before I can make it back to Missouri. Uh, I've got so many you things. you need work on MC7, if that's something that you need, um, email Scott, and I can get you on the list. Yeah, yeah, I sent an email to the scott at buscreasemonkey.com uh, if you want to try to get on the list. Then, then I can at least get you on our list and we can let you know when we're Tell us 
So what kind of bus you have, where you're at, and what work you need to have done. That's what we really need to have to get you on the list. Um, and then there's no guarantees. I have zero guarantees, especially on specific dates and times because everything needs to be flexible. Um, I just saw another super chat pop up on here. Uh, I never even thought about it before, but now I'm looking for a used bus and it's all your fault of the channel. <laughs> Sorry. Buses are awesome. They are, they're fun. They're a lot of fun. I think there was just another super chat too. Um, where is Joe in Oregon? Joe is in, I just drew a blank. Eugene? Eugene, isn't it? Yes, it's, not it's, it's right next it's to It's a little town right next to Eugene. It's basically Eugene. Like you get off at the Eugene exit, and instead of go right, you go left, and it's like one mile away. So Joe is the man. He, he's amazing. Oil heaters give you no cause for concern on soot buildup in the pan infiltrating the bearings? And it's question mark. Say that again. Oil heaters give you no cause for concern on soot buildup in the pan and betraying the bearings. I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm sorry. I it's don't, a I, question mark. Yeah, I don't um, understand. I don't, oil heaters, I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, the soot in the the pan, like the pan, like the magnetic kind you stick on the bottom, that doesn't, it doesn't boil the oil or anything. So there's no soot unless we're talking about something else. I have no idea. Uh, will you show us more about air systems? Uh, a little bit here and there, but again, if you want to learn about air systems, just go take the Bendix has a great informational video series to go go watch it. There's tons of cool stuff about it. I don't know about this question. Uh -oh. You should answer it. What was the worst bus you ever had the honor to work on? Ooh. Don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> Let me, think, let me think who, who wrote the biggest check to me. <laughs> um, I know my answer on this one, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, that one sucked. and But that's not the bus's fault, so I'm not going to mention that. That's, that. We're talking about that one. Um, probably, you know, there was a bus that I worked on with Jeffrey that, that he had bought, and... Um, Somebody else just bought it. I saw it went up for sale. It's changed hands a couple times, but it was a 4106. It had been sitting for a long time. We went down there, we got it going. That's the one that had that massive, it had five gallons of oil in the air tank in it. And just, it, we got everything ready to go on the bus, running, great. And then we add all the fluids and everything's great. And then I happened to, you know, I checked the coolant again after we've run the engine for a while and there's oil in the coolant. Um, and that was just very like, demoralizing, like everything was ready to go. And, you know, having the oil in, in the coolant was like, oh crap. Now it's, we're probably not gonna take it home right now. So it was either oil cooler or air compressor. Um, so that, he, he, we left that behind and went back a year later, uh, Ivan had bought that bus um, because Ivan needed a good transmission. It had, a, it had a V730 in it. So he paid him, I don't remember what it was, like 3,500 bucks or something like that. Um, we went down there, got that bus running, drove it back up to northern Florida, pulled the good transmission out, put Ivan's bad transmission back in that 4106 so that it was at least mobile. It could it could drive. And then, you know, I told people if they're buying it, you know, it's like for a tiny home or something, you know, it's not. Otherwise, you got to find a new transmission for it because that transmission was not going to last long at all. So that was just a lot of work that I didn't want to have to do on a bus. I It's never any fun to do that. Um, that was probably the worst for me, just like, because I was so excited. It's going to be back on the road again. We won the battle and then the oil, and, you know, and that's like I, when I was working on, um, I think it was Benny, uh, one of the little O-rings came out and, you know, we just did the engine rebuild on it, started it up. It's running great. And next thing you know, we got milkshake in the oil that, that kind of thing sucks. Uh, if you've ever experienced that, and then you got to tear it all down again, uh, and figure out what the, it was obvious what the problem was. And, and it was just a head gasket. Uh, that had misaligned as we were positioning the head. Uh, little, little things like that suck to me. When you have to go back and redo something, I mean, you think you're you're over the hill on it and, it and it happens and then you gotta go backwards. One step forward, two steps back. Uh, I've doing a lot of that lately. <laughs> I would love to hear more about your father-son plan for Detroit swap vehicle. What direction are you wanting to go? I don't know, we have no plan. Uh, we're, we were looking for something unusual um, and just fun to work on. Um, 
something that maybe has a little bit more room under the hood. Um, it'll probably end up being like a 453T or something like that that we throw into it. It's not going to be something, you know, we're not putting a 12V71 in a uh, Chevy S10, which now that I mentioned that, Tyler will probably want to do that. <laughs> Would you put an Indianapolis Colt sticker on Lenny? Would I put a Colt sticker? Um, we don't really put stickers on him. Yeah, well, I put, we I, he, he's got a few stickers on there. Uh, I feel like if we put that on, we'd have to put a lot Especially of if I go to New England, they're not going to like that. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't like the Patriots. Yeah, we don't like the Patriots. If there. you like the Colts, you don't like the Patriots. That's, and if you like the Patriots, you don't like the Colts. So and our son I, loves the Patriots. I understand. Yeah, that, yeah, our son, he did that to us. He, he decided to be a Patriots fan. But he's not a football fan. He hates football, but he loves it. I, I think he did I, to make us mad. He did to make us mad. <laughs> um, when buying a bus, what would be a good starting out platform with a reasonable, not break the bank budget? Uh, something with an inline 671, because I think they're the easiest motors to work on. Um, and something that's not, uh, well, if it's already running and driving, that's probably the best way. You know, if you find one that's been sitting for a long time, um, you know, you're gonna have a lot more, they don't like to sit. So you know, maintenance wise, if it's something that's currently on the road, uh, that's gonna, that's the best thing you can look for. It's still running and driving, good date code tires on it. Otherwise, no matter what bus you buy, you know, you're looking at 10 grand additional by the time you put tires. Oh, I just saw it pop up. Have you ever attended the Indy 500? I attend the Indy 500 every single freaking year, except, except this, year. this past year. Oh. as the first time I've missed the race in like 15 years. We go every year and we actually spend, use, usually spend the entire month of May out at the at IMS every single day. Um, yeah, we get we get the the bronze badges and everything. And we, we go every single day, the whole month. And then now that they have the uh, the Grand Prix, I'm an Indy 500 freaking nut. I love IndyCar. Uh, I said, so I, we, I don't watch any other form of racing except for open wheel IndyCar racing. You know, we have the, she's wearing a Hinchcliffe shirt right now. Go Hinch! We are big time Hinchcliffe fans. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, we love the month of May out at Indy. It is, if you've never been at Indy 500, it is the most fun race ever. Um, nicest people. Nicest people there. And I, I know a bunch of people that work for race teams. And uh, when we had our photography studio here, we photographed uh, families of drivers and, you know, car owners and everything. And it's just, it's a, even people that own the speedway, you know, we, family members and stuff like that too. So, um, it, it's just, it's amazing. I am the world's biggest IndyCar fan period. I'm probably tied for first. How's that? <laughs> when are you going to install Jake Brakes? Uh, when I get them, so somebody, one of my, uh, subscribers was going to be sending me a set and they're not here yet. And I, I thought they'd be home when we got home. Um, but it's going to go on soon. Definitely before the next time I head out West, I'll have them on there. That REI camera is nice. Will it work on semis? Um, I, well, because you have, if you're always having the same trailer, then maybe, yeah, probably. I don't know if you saw that. We're going to be installing that REI 360 3d camera view thing. Uh, it shows like an, basically if you had like a drone, above your bus showing everything next to you and in front of you and behind you completely all the way around. That's what that view is. There's a, I posted a link to a video of theirs on our, um, what was that called? The community page. So go check that out. If you're not, it's the coolest thing ever. We're going to be adding it to the, I don't think I'm going to have it in time before we go to Minnesota. I would love to have it on there. Um, I, I don't know if it's shipped yet or not. Um, last I heard they were going to ship it by the end of last week or the beginning of this week. And I hadn't heard. So hopefully if it has shipped, it's already coming and, and then maybe I can install it while we're in Minnesota, but Lenny's getting some serious electronic upgrade stuff coming up. Um, and that is one of the things, uh, we, we need to get a new GPS. Um, I had an issue. The GPS that I have isn't for trucks and semis and it tried to send me over a bridge, uh, that had a 10 ton weight limit on it. Um, uh, luckily I was paying attention and I knew I wasn't going to go that way. Um, but the GPS would have done that to me. So I need to get a, an RV one that, that you can enter in your weights and your heights. Uh, so it doesn't do that to you. And, uh, Garmin is what I have now. And Garmin has other ones like that. That's what I'm probably looking at is buying another Garmin. Uh, I sent Garmin a message actually yesterday, um, asking them kind of what they thought might be the best one for me and that kind of stuff. So I didn't, uh, I was kind of hoping that they could answer the questions for me better than me doing. I just don't have time to, to research it very much. And some of you guys may, may well know too, but, uh, you know, something that has traffic and other stuff too. And, um, I mean, we have so much electronic stuff on the bus, 
Um, you know, we have the TPMS system, which one of my sensors is bad right now. I got to get that replaced. So one of my tires is telling me it's got like 150 pounds of pressure in it, but it's not. So it got wet inside there. I changed the battery and there was like corrosion inside of there. Um, but I love the tire pressure monitor system too. I saw another super chat just go by. Somebody said, uh, oh, who's your hospitality? Yes. The, the, the Indy 500 race, it's just, it's so much fun. Uh, is Tyler permanently helping you? No, he's not. He's got his own thing. Um, I just happened to be able to get him for those last couple jobs. And then he's got a few things and, you know, he's self-employed. So if I can send him some work um, and, you know, his schedule's not full, then he's going to pick it up just to make some extra money. But uh, he he's pretty busy with his own stuff too. And then working out the shop with Chris. Will you guys show more of your St. Bernard's? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow we can get them. Okay. Clyde is huge. I can't believe Clyde's the puppy that we got. He'll be, he's 11 months old now. 11 months? And he's a few inches taller he's than He's probably other. four inches taller than our other St. Bernard's. He is a giant. Tall I can't, and skinny. Tall and skinny. He's so skinny. Um, he's dumb, too. God, is he dumb. <laughs> he's pure puppy. <laughs> nope. Doesn't know what personal space is. Uh, do you see anything? Uh, can you sh show more videos where you are shifting and going through the gears on your Silver Sides bus? Love your videos. Yeah, I'll do that. And I know people love it when I downshift, especially downshift like coming down a hill and stuff like that. That's fun. Um, that that takes a little bit of time to get used to knowing. You got to be real familiar with your transmission. Like when you first get and you start driving a non-synchronized transmission, uh, shifting and not grinding gears is difficult. Uh, downshifting is very difficult and then downshifting when you're going down a hill when it's trying to push you faster and stuff like that it takes you just got to know yeah the rev matching uh, and I don't have a tachometer so I, it's all by look sound feel vibration um, if I had a tachometer it might even be a little bit easier but yeah I don't have a tachometer I just saw another super chat come in um, thanks for sharing with us Robert uh, ooh, I'm gonna mangle your last name or Shay <laughs> Have you ever dealt with a 4502 new look highway coach? Um, I mean, I, I used to have a new look. Uh, that, that's, that model isn't, uh, I, I don't know that specific number. They, they made a whole bunch of different numbers, but uh, it was probably Suburban would be my guess is what it was. Um, it's basically the exact same thing. One thing that's very disappointing when I got my first fishbowl, um, you know, we've all seen the movie Speed, and you know that little panel that comes out in the middle that he lays down on and gets lowered down and, and scrapes the road with it or whatever? That's not really a panel in a, in a fishbowl bus. Because <laughs> when I first got mine, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to go work on that front axle. I'll just pull that little hatch up and climb down there and be by the axle. Uh, no, that's not there. <laughs> they made that shit for the movie. <laughs> Everything in the movies are real. Yeah. Um, Probably can't jump the bus either. You can try. I think they did it on, on Mythbusters, though. Um, someone just says, I got the REI 3D camera for my motor coach because I saw it uh, at BusCon you took us to. Oh. So I'd be interested if they've got Christopher Rasmussen. Uh, if they've yep. got that. You met Chris. He, was, he, was, he came down at, um, uh, when we were working on, at Sean's place. And when we were working on that Eagle, putting okay. the wheels back on the Eagle, he was there that day. I think he was wearing a white white top or something. Yeah, he, he, you don't show up by buses. Yeah, he showed up, by, <laughs> we're working on buses, he's all in white. I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's dangerous. Stand over there. <laughs> but I would be interested if, if you're still on here, if, if you've got that installed and how you like it. Yeah, did, did you get it, did he get it installed yet? I don't know. Okay, did yeah, it's gotta be really cool. Yeah, I had a Tom Tom. Somebody, I saw somebody asking about the thing. I had a Tom Tom before, and I didn't like it. I took it back. Although I did have, I think I had Snoop Snoop Dogg's voice on it. That was pretty cool. Um, other than that, I hated it uh, compared to the Garmin. I had Garmin before, and then I got that Tom Tom mostly because I liked the voices that you could have. Um, and then I decided no, that wasn't for me. So then I went to back to Garmin again. I've always, I, I just like, I, I, it's probably if it whatever. I don't like change, so maybe I was just really familiar and used to the Garmin. That's why I liked it. Um, and yeah, the one that I have now has free lifetime map updates and all that. I'm, I think everything pretty much probably comes with that now, but I want to make sure that has that. Um, this old bus. Thanks for everything. Hey, that's Scott. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you do that. That's the, this old bus. Hopefully it'll come up. If not, 
Uh, I'll post a link to him because I, I don't know if he was coming up. Somebody said last time I saw that it wasn't coming up by searching for him. Um, he probably doesn't have a custom URL yet or something, but that's Scott, the guy in, that let me work on my bus in his barn when I dropped the valve at his house. Um, and he was very hospitable. Um, is that the word? Hospitable? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me a video or a, a, um, a text last night with a picture of his whole family. He was in the background and it was his wife and his daughter. And on the TV in the background, you could see our, our, our latest video. And he's like, it's a whole family affair watching the video. I thought that was really cool that he sent that to me. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Which is better, aluminum wheel or steel wheel and why? Uh, there's nothing, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Aluminum is lighter weight, uh, steel is stronger. Um, Semi trucks, I understand why they do it because they, you know, they're trying to carry their maximum amount of weight that they can. Uh, you know, they got to go over scales and they're carrying big heavy loads and, and they need every bit of weight freed up that they can get. So if they can save 40 pounds a wheel, it's worth it for them. Um, for me and other people, it's not really there. And aluminum cracks and it corrodes and, you know, steel rusts and stuff like that too. They, like I said, they both have advantages and disadvantages. My bus is set up for steel. If you go to aluminum, you got to change all your studs and studs are like 10 to $15 per stud, uh, you know, 10 per wheel. Uh, that adds up really quick, plus the new cost of that. And the steel ones just last about forever, so. How many times have you been asked if you're going to Quartzsite in January? I've only been asked a few times and we're going to be out that way, but I don't think we're going to have time to go. I mean, I would love to go and meet people and talk to people, but I just, uh, I, unfortunately I have way too many things on my schedule to get to, but maybe next year we'll make Quartzsite a trip where we actually go to it. I saw a couple of super chats pop up there. Um, oh, K hammered. Is that what it's supposed to be? Um, hello from the UK. Hey, um, Again, I love it. That's my favorite favorite foreign country to visit because I almost speak the language. That's what <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We went. We we have. Oh, they're not on the walls behind me. Um, we have. Yeah, when we went to to England, we went to uh, Bath and all that too. Plus in London Stonehenge. and Stonehenge. That was. I love that kind of stuff. That was really cool. But just the history and the you know all the tours. You know. Definitely want to go back. It was cool and everybody was very friendly there. It was nice. And uh, Miller Medium, you didn't actually post a question or anything, but thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Um, if you have a question and I see your name go by, um, oh, we just said great channel. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. And I guess if we put it in our schedule for next time around, we could, but where is Quartzsite at even? Uh, what is it, Arizona out there? I think it's in Arizona. And we'll be we'll be in there. It's huge. It's like it becomes like the largest city. Maybe it's Nevada. I don't know where else. No, Arizona, I think. Um, wherever it's down that way, southwest, and it's the hugest. Like it becomes like the largest town or I something. Go, I just didn't know where it was at, and unfortunately, like, we'll be there. If I said hundreds of thousands of people in RVs show up there for the winter time, like the snowbirds and stuff like that, so it's a huge thing. Unfortunately, uh, we'll be in that area in December, not January. Uh, the sick shop just did a. Oh, what did I just do? Sorry. Um, uh, do you have any plans west of the Mississippi coming up? Um, how can I get on your schedule in the future? We did mention that earlier. Just send me an email, scott at buscreasemonkey.com. Um, put like something about getting on the schedule in the, the title or the, is it the title or whatever? Subject line. Sub subject line. Um, but then mention what kind of bus you have, where you're at, what work you want to have done, and then I'll see about getting you added to the list. Uh, but I ain't got a lot of you. There are hundreds of people on that list, so. But they don't always want the work when we're head into the area. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you. Somebody just say where Quartzsite is. Uh, north of Phoenix, south of Lake Havasu. Okay. Maybe not this January, but maybe for next January, we can just make sure our schedule works to go through that way. We're usually in- Florida. It would be a great way to meet people and see. I mean, there's a whole GM bus rally that goes on out there. And um, yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff. I just can't see us making the trip before Christmas, come back home and then turn around and go back again. It's in not, January. and we got to be home for Christmas, so yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe you already answered. Do buses use shutters and shutter stats? Yeah, a lot of them do, but they're not real. Um, most of them aren't operational, and only people that want to have them. If you live in really, really cold, but you know, cardboard can do that too, and um, it's, it's not. 
I, I don't wreck. I, if, if, a, if a shutter size, if the shutters break, uh, you know, just take them off. That's, that's, it's usually easier and cheaper than, than buying new ones. I just saw another super chat. I wanted to thank uh, James Hayden for that. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, have you ever considered Jacob's brakes on your bus? Yes, yeah, we're gonna put them on there. We're, it's, it's coming up soon, we've mentioned that already too. I just saw another super chat again. Um, men, 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 in, men in black, nice. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Um, thanks for explaining the uh, world of your office of two-stroke diesels. My dad loved them. Uh, drive it like you stole it and you couldn't kill them. That's right, yeah, you don't, you don't wanna pussyfoot around on them. Um, just, you know, be, be hard on them. And they like that. Uh, they probably, mine doesn't probably like the high RPM that I'm running mine at. Um, but, uh, that's a good thing to, uh, to keep an eye on. If you have that, I never recommend, I've never set my governor as high on any client's buses as what my bus is set at. And I, I don't recommend that, but I'm going to rebuild it and put a turbo on it. And until then I'm having fun driving it the way that I am and doing things that people say I can't do. Uh, and I just saw another super chat from John Clamshell SP. Uh, what is the best engine coolant antifreeze one can use? Um, I like how you use the word coolant antifreeze together. Because last year when we were down working on Ivan's bus, I sent him to AutoZone um, to get some... His wife. Oh, I sent his wife to AutoZone. And she doesn't speak English very well. Her, her French is her main speaking language. So we sent her to get some antifreeze at... Uh, I think it was AutoZone. And they walked in, they didn't understand what she was saying. They didn't understand what antifreeze was. And they finally understood that she was trying to buy coolant. Uh, so I guess in Florida, it's not antifreeze. Everywhere else it is. It's just coolant. What is the best to use though? Is that what the question was? I'm yeah. sorry. God. Um, uh, in a 71 series, you can use anything you want. Uh, the green stuff, whatever is, is great. Uh, but if it's a 92 series, you must use a high performance diesel rated coolant. Uh, so something that usually just, I just say it has a picture of a semi truck on the bottle and not a pickup truck. That's what you want. Uh, some stuff says okay for diesel engines, but they don't, it's not for heavy duty diesel engines. So it's just for like a little, like a Dodge Ram diesel or something like that. Not a, a Detroit diesel. It needs to have special SCA additives and stuff in there. And I, I don't want to get into the technical side of it, but you, because it has a wet liner, you cannot have cavitation happening. Uh, in a 92 series, uh, a 71 series does not matter. Matter of fact, the only thing the book says uh, is not to use ditch water in the in the cooling system. Um, it doesn't even say like tap water or you know deionized water or distilled water. It says do not use ditch water, um, like a ditch, the thing on the side of the road with the nasty water. So that's all it says. <laughs> I don't know who would use ditch water. I don't know, but that's what it says in the book. The book says some pretty funny things. Okay, and Christopher has said uh, yes, and then down the further, she is clear. So I'm assuming he means yes that he's installed the camera. Oh, yeah, cool. Send send me a screenshot or uh, like a picture of your monitor with that uh, REI camera system. I, I would love to see how that looks with your bus. I know there's there's some things you got to do with the stitching of the images and some computer work and stuff like that too. But I'm planning on. Uh, it's not the way it's made to be, but I'm hoping that I can take the video feed from that camera system and send it back to our TV in the back bedroom. So when we're sitting there at night or something too, um, yeah, that, that's what REI stands for. Um, and you can, they, they sell a lot of electronic stuff for buses and in the bus world, uh, trucks, semis, RVs, things like that. They're, they're amazing. We, we met them and talked to them out at um, uh, BusCon and I'll, I'll be talking about them a whole bunch more in the future too. Um, but yeah, that I want to, I want to use that camera feed in the back so we can throw it up on our TV. So if I hear a noise outside the bus or whatever, I can get a 360 degree perimeter view of the bus. Uh, that'll make me feel real comfortable knowing that and, and seeing that too. Cause I've had like a homeless guy trying to climb in my bay to sleep one night and you know, people peeing on the tires and stuff like that. And it's ridiculous. It's, it's some of the cities that I get parked in and stuff. Yeah. I saw another, um, Super chat from Scott Robertson. Uh, please let me know when you're in Jacksonville. Is MC6 an easy? Um, but, oh, you're MC6 all the way down. It's not in Jacksonville, though. Is Jayville? Is that something else? Is Jayville? I think that's Jacksonville. Yeah, Scott has an MC6 with the 12V71 in it. Um, they took us on a fun test drive last year. Uh, that's down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, though, I think, right? That's where I think he's at. But yeah, no, I'll let you know when I'm down there. Oh, you're moving. Uh oh, he's moving. Well, Jeffrey's in Jacksonville. Jeffrey's right? in Jacksonville, yeah. Well, St. Augustine. But St. Augustine. Right. Okay, cool. So probably in January, February. Yep, somewhere around there. 
How do you get over the stress of worrying about your bus breaking down or needing roadside repair repairs? That's really where you're at. Cause I saw that question go by like an hour ago. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're talking. Well, yeah, I answer too many questions and too many people ask questions. Oh wow, we have 666 people in the chat right now. Great number. Um, so, okay, now we're 668, good. Um, <laughs> Mine says 696. Okay. Nope, 673. Know. It's changing all over time. Um, I forgot the question, <laughs> even though I remember reading what it was. How do you deal with the oh, stress? Oh, there's no stress. I mean, I, I work on it. When it, If something starts to act a little finicky, then the next time I get to where I'm at or I get home, I tear it apart and fix it and work on it. I don't just let, oh, that's making a weird noise back there every time I do this, you know, and then you wait for it to break down. That's not how you do it. Um, whenever something's talking to you, usually these buses talk to you. They don't just go kaput. Uh, they, they start making a noise, they get a vibration, and then if you address it, it's just, uh, that's how it works. That's that's what you do. I'm never afraid. I've had two breakdowns. I mean, knock on wood, uh, that's, not, that's metal, but um, uh, I'm asking for it by saying that. But the first breakdown I had, the fan came off and went right through the radiator. I called Lance and we soldered up 44 tubes of the radiator on the side of the road. Tyler brought a new fan down to me. My fan was all curly Q. The fan that I had was too big, so I actually sawed the blades off on a fan with a sawzall in a parking lot. And we put the, that fan back on, put the radiator on, and we kept adding uh, water to the, to the radiator about every 15 miles on the highway. And I drove it 200 miles home, 12 hours late. That's all we were delayed was 12 hours with that. And then the other... Uh, breakdown, you guys got the witness, which was the dropping the valve, which I, I immediately started, saw a puff of smoke, and I'm like, that is not right. Shut it off right away, pulled the valve cover, saw the valve was dropped, and two days later, we had that thing running. So I'm not afraid of breaking down on that thing because I listen to it, I pay attention to it, and it's and if it happens, it happens. I have, uh, well, I had good Sam's before, but when we tried to get them out to, to do some stuff for us, they, uh, they couldn't get a tow truck for us, never did it for, as for a client. Um, I was just trying to get them to come out and they wouldn't do anything. So now we have a uh, coach net and I'm hoping that if I do have a problem that I can rely on a company like that to at least get me off the interstate. Uh, and then at that point I'll fix whatever it is, but I just need to get out. I don't want to be in a dangerous spot when something like that happens. Okay. Marathon or Liberty or a vintage bus, dollars to invest being about equal, would need to hire a firm to restore, convert a vintage bus. Vintage bus, hands down. I mean, I, I love, uh, I mean, that, that new stuff is amazing. It's, it's beautiful, but it's complicated. You can't ever work on any of it yourself ever for the rest of your life. But if that's the person that you are, where you have the budget and you're never going to work on it anyways, then you probably want something like that. But if you, you know what, half the fun about having a bus is when you do break down or when something's not right and you got to fix it. That's, that's half of the fun of it, to me at least. Uh, uh, not, if everything was perfect, that would suck. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't have to be horrible. It just doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Have you thought of installing a Webasto system for the cold times? Oh, uh, that would be really nice. Uh, have you thought about how expensive those things are um, and the maintenance that's required on them and all that? Yeah, it's... I, I have an answer for that. No, because I don't want to be anywhere cold. Oh, yeah, we try not to be anywhere cold. <laughs> that's our... That's my answer, but... <laughs> Yeah, they're like 12,000 bucks or something like that for, you know, like a pro heat or whatever, all that stuff. It's really expensive and no, it's not gonna happen. And we go, we go south. What one thing do you hate the most about owning a bus? Nothing. That I only have one? <laughs> you, can only have, you can only be in one at a time, so. Yeah, but I can have a spare ready to go too. And I don't know, no, there's nothing I hate about it. Um, Fuel prices. I don't even, fuel prices aren't even that bad. If I had to pick something. I mean, a few years ago, we took a trip. We went all the way out west and, and fuel was, you know, four fifty a gallon. That sucked. But yeah, I, I don't mind I mean, it. There's nothing that I my clients pay. are usually paying for my fuel to get from job to job. So I'm basically driving anyway. So I, that doesn't really af affect me that way, I guess. If I was just, you know, on a fixed budget and was trying to drive around the country on it, that kind of thing. I just saw another super chat coming on here from William Oswalt. Uh, Lenny is family should be a hashtag. Lenny is family should be a hashtag. Yeah, he is part of the family. I mean, he's... He's a boy. He is. He, he's a good boy. <laughs> I pat him on the back. We always walk up to him, give him a pat, and tell him he's a good boy. Are we uh, All the time. I <laughs> give him a little tap on the dash. You're a good boy, Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Lenny. <laughs> what does Lenny want for Christmas? Oh, what does Lenny want for Christmas? 
probably need wiper blades. <laughs> now that this wiper works, all I did was snip off that little part of the blade that was kind of hanging to the side. <laughs> so he's gonna need some wiper blades. I need help on an MC7. Please let me know if you can come near Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be. Um, but again, send, send the list. If you want to get on the list, send 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 it like I said. Uh, is Teespring going to carry children's size clothes? I'll have to look. I think there might be some on there. I just didn't load them. Yeah, there might be. We probably didn't um, think of that. So that was Rodney Middleton. Uh, if you want to send Scott an email and if there's something specific you design you're looking for I can make sure I can upload it right away um, but otherwise maybe on this I think they do have they do have children's I, sizes they have available different stuff. They we have, just we just might never have activated it or made it available like that. I would have to go in individually so if you if there's a certain design that you're wanting let Scott know and I can make sure I can get that up there for yeah you. which I want to make one I want to make a new sticker from there anyways for me I want to put on my bus where it says my bus isn't smoking it's vaping that's more socially acceptable. Would rust proofing help with these old buses under coating spray? Most of them already have it, but yeah, it doesn't. I mean, anything to keep stuff off of it. That's okay. My stuff just went crazy again, so it gets hard. It just, I don't know where it took me to. So if you see something, Um, do you bring the dogs with you? No, but Willow has gone. Yeah, the one I've had the one St. Bernard with me. The, the other St. Bernard, Leroy, he doesn't like to get on the bus to get him up and off of it. He just doesn't like it. He's afraid of, I don't know, yeah, he's claustrophobic. <laughs> he, he doesn't enjoy it. And I'd be afraid that uh, I'd get somewhere with him and then he would decide he doesn't want to get back on the bus because usually I can kind of coax him up in there, but sometimes he just does not want to do it. And if, if a 180 pound dog doesn't want to do something, it's not very fun. Especially getting him up a little door when he, you know, he'll throw his feet out and like, I'm not going in that thing. And uh, plus I don't want to force him to do that, but it's, it's too afraid to do that. Okay, so I don't know what happened here. It only lets me go back so far. I think it showed me all the way to the bottom. Okay. So I'm sorry if I missed your questions. I'm going back as far as I can. Okay. And it's not letting me go back to where I was. Uh, can you think of a more iconic sound than a Detroit? No. Well, a hit and miss, maybe. Uh, that's kind of a unusual thing. Have you ever seen the spring in a brake chamber break? Uh, the return spring, but not not a regular. No, not the spring break. But I've seen them rust out, where the side of them, the side of them rusted out, and the spring comes out that way. Um, I just saw another super chat coming from Chicken Fizz. Uh, was never previously interested in buses, but found your channel a few weeks ago. I'm hooked. Uh, and yourself and your family seem awesome. Thanks. Yeah, they are pretty awesome. Appreciate that. And then uh, Daniel Tohill, Tohill, probably, excuse me for not pronouncing names right because I'm terrible at stuff like that. Um, I, you have been invited to Casablanca's for a free meal. Just ask me, Dan Tohill, after 6 p.m. Friday or Saturday night. Is that somewhere local here? I don't know what that is. Read it completely and louder. Yeah, they can probably see it too. <laughs> Not if they're behind like me. Tyler wants us to work on hit and miss engines. I know that when I was just at um, Mark's place and I saw that hit and miss engine sitting in the corner, I was like, oh, I wouldn't have, wish I had time to play with that thing. <laughs> Are you obsessed with Lucas Oil? Um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I use it. Um, I actually probably like the Hyper Lube uh, better than I like the, they said Lucas Oil, right? Is that what mm -hmm. you said? Yeah. yeah. Um, the the oil stabilizer. I, I've always used it, but I, I things just feel so much slimier with the Hyper Lube in there. I, I, I think I'm kind of more on that now, right now. What are the latest years for Silver Slides? 48, 47, 48. There's only the yeah, last two years I made them. So 40 and 41, I think, were the first two years they did the pre-war version. And then they, after the war, they came back after GM bought Yellow Coach, 47, 48. 
Somebody just said they watched somebody on YouTube, Mark uh, Gallica, and he, he runs a sawmill off of a Detroit 671. There's a lot of them. Um, I, Gene Russell's got a sawmill out there that his son works on um, that's run by a 71 series as well. That was real common. Someone's asking them. I'm just now getting to where your super chats are. Okay, here. she's way behind. <laughs> Not her fault. <laughs> Someone wants to know if the uh, since the governor's been modified, is it holding up good for you? Yeah. Oh God, the governor is amazing. Those springs. I'm gonna. I am going to buy some of those springs just to carry with me and and help out some people. Um, now that I know what that governor can do uh, and what those springs can do, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna order some of those just to have them and uh, hook up some other buses with them. Okay, um, I have a 1960 Audell's diesel engine manual. It covers GMC two strokes. How can I send it to you in appreciation for your videos? Um, my shipping address is 7123 <laughs> Cedar Mill Court. <laughs> That's in Avon, Indiana, 46123. <laughs> And I just saw another super chat from James Hayden. Uh, will you be coming to Australia? We really want to. Um, we just we don't have it scheduled right now. Um, but our I believe our passports are current. And uh, I think we're good until October of next year. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. so yeah, we we love to go out there, and we've we've always talked about going there. And we'll probably if we do that, we're gonna go. We'll do like New Zealand too. And we'll, I want to go and do it right. She's got, yeah, she's got a list of things. So it'll probably be several, several weeks that we would do that. And um, yeah, if we could work it out too, where we visit some other buses and work on some other buses and things, that would be really fun. The, the YouTube channel is growing. Um, and if we get a chance to, you know, make some money while we're on the road from the YouTube channel, that would definitely help us be able to afford to do that too. So, and I think it would be some great content to see some of the buses in other countries and unusual things and stuff like that too. So. Air PS an option for Lenny? If so, would you consider? Yeah, air air assist power steering was a, was an option on the Silver Size. They just use a lot of air, and if I'm going to convert it to regular full on full blown power steering, that's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, so no, I'm not going to I'm not going to waste my time putting an air power air assist on there. Why I would definitely you, cease to. By the way, sorry. when I went to Australia. Why do you think more people aren't interested in the Eagle? There's a lot of people interested in Eagle. Oh my God, if you if you followed any rock stars or rock bands or anything like in the 80s, you want to have an Eagle because you want to be just as cool as those guys were, you know? So like your Motley Crue and all those people that were traveling around in Eagles, that that's what's burned into your brain as the ultimate cool thing is an Eagle. Um, and they are. I mean, if you wanted, you know, any kind of that, that iconic 80s, uh, big name star stuff. I mean, it, that's, you, you made it when you got an Eagle. That's, that's what it was. They, they were, they were cool. They still are, but I, I myself just happen to love that super, super old stuff. Uh, when will you have the RBG LEDs mounted under the side skirts? Uh, I have no idea. That, 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 that'd be way down my list of things to do. I mean, I heard you mention that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have, but, um, yeah, we're, uh, I, I got all kinds of other lighting issues inside the bus right now. Um, I went out there tonight and plugged in a light and one of the huge LED strips that we have that runs down the whole length of the bus, the first three little lights or two lights, was it two lights? Two lights. Two lights lit up and everything else was black. <laughs> so we're out there with flashlights trying, trying to, it was terrible. Um, my, my lighting in there is really, really bad. I just saw a super chat pop up on here from Two Feathers uh, RV. Um, do you have a page created for the 3751, 4151 that lists your recommended upgrades and suppliers? Uh, we're picking up our second bus on Wednesday. Uh, no, I mean, look at US coach uh, Gene Russell at Russell Diesel in Mill Spring, North Carolina. Uh, he's got most parts for all that kind of stuff. And then other than that, I mean, I know uh, a bunch of other people that have many of them and for parts and stuff like that. But Gene Russell would be my first call if I'm ever looking for a part or advice on something. Uh, if something even I don't know the answer to, he's the guy to call and uh, he's the one. Okay. How much is the 360 system? Uh, it's close to two grand. I, I think like some, somewhere around there. Uh, maybe, um, 
Chris will jump in that just bought one. No, let him know what he paid for everything. I don't, I don't remember with all the accessories and other, you know, DVR. And if you already have a monitor or if you're using their monitor, that, that kind of stuff can add up. I already have a monitor, so I'm not, I don't need to buy another monitor. I actually have a spare monitor, but um, yeah, everything else. Yes, because one is logo 465 and Rockville Road in front of Santa's Club. Oh, um, so Casablanca, so kind of like the, the movie kind of thing. It's, it's a rest, oh, okay. yeah, restaurant. Yeah, now. Kelly knows where that is. Um, so that's what, 10th Street area? Is that? 465 in Rockville. Oh, got it. So now I'm 465 in Rockville. Okay. Uh, oh, it's on the other side of the. On the other side. Got it. Yep. Okay. I, I usually don't go that way on Rockville very much. So it's, and I'm not, I haven't been home here in Indy for a long time. But yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Does it make you sick when you see someone purposely blow up an old two-story Detroit? Um, it doesn't make me sick because I won't watch it. So I don't watch any of that stuff. People, I was so mad like a couple weeks ago, somebody did that or whatever. And people kept posting links to the stupid video. And I actually had to go in and block links from automatically posting to our page. Cause I was, I'm like, why are, they're like, oh, look at this guy. He did this, he blew up this engine on purpose. And then you put a link to it. Why would you do that? Uh, that, that just means that more people are gonna read that and go watch it and then reward that guy for doing that. Um, I have, so if you see somebody do that, don't post it and share it on my page. I don't care. I think it's ignorant and it's dumb to do. Um, but. If they own the engine, they can do whatever they want, and that's fine, but I'm not gonna support them in their effort to do something so dumb. Um, I just, I don't like, I mean, there were, there was millions of them made, so it's not like it's the last one that they're destroying, but it's just it's just dumb. I, I, I don't wanna support it, I don't care for it, and don't share it on our channel, please. But that being said, if one runs away on purpose, I will definitely share the video of it. I was so mad. I had that the one that ran away one time. I was recording it, and uh, it had a stuck fuel injector, and that sucker took off. And the very second the engine took off, a telemarketer called my my cell phone, and that stopped the video from recording. So I didn't get the video of it. I was so mad. Uh, if you want a truck GPS, Teletype is a good one, but they are very expensive. Just yeah, I, I'll probably, I'll stick with Garmin. I, I only for the fact that I try. I ventured to another company and I didn't like it. I, I don't want to risk that. I just I know what I like and I, I'm used to that and I'm familiar with it. I mean, if they change one little thing on a program, you know, like a, do an update on the phone and they change something, I hate that. So Garmin seems pretty consistent the way they do things, and that's how I like it. Uh, what was Lenny's Greyhound number? Uh, I don't know it. I it, I do I do have that somewhere, but I don't know what it is offhand. Um, but it's, it's very easy to look up by his VIN number and, and I had it. And I tried to, for a while, I was looking for vintage pictures of him with that fleet number on there uh, and I'd never been able to find one. And I contacted several people that have pretty good collections of historic Greyhound photos and they all went through their, their stock and, and didn't have one. Uh, but it would be real easy to, you know, to find that number. I just, I, I feel bad that I don't remember what it was, um, but it, I, it's easy for me to find that out. Uh, are you coming to Illinois anytime soon? Uh, I'll be driving through Illinois this week um, on Thursday as, as I avoid Chicago. So I'll be taking 74 out to, uh, what is it, 55? Or we go up through like Joliet and Rockford and then up to Minneapolis that way. So we'll go through Wisconsin. And But I'll just be hauling ass. I'm not going to be stopping. I, I won't even need fuel at that point. So well, I guess I will. In Illinois, I'll probably fuel up because we're, we're 300 miles right now. I'll, I'll probably usually go about 600 miles before I fuel up. When did you first start working on vehicles? Uh, in high school, uh, Volkswagens. That's all in the How Did I Become Bus Grease Monkey. Watch that video and you'll get a lot of information about that. Yeah, I definitely avoid Chicago because that I, I hate start and stop traffic and my bus only gets three miles per gallon in the city. So why would I ever go through Chicago in the well, bus? I've done it. I just well, don't like it. Shelly and Sally. Yeah, we picked up Shelly and Sally at four o'clock on a Friday. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your favorite customer and bus? Oh, that's like picking your favorite kid. Oh man, probably Frank. We love Frank. <laughs> Frank, Frank, Frank. But I love going and by Sherry and Sean. Yeah, yeah, and They're Jeffrey awesome. working with Jeffrey and everything too. Florida, Florida. Everybody in Florida. We like we like all of our Florida customers. But I really did enjoy our time with George. Yeah, George was fun too. But, There's a bunch of them. Um, 
Now the ones I didn't like are, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is a required requirement for me. If you want me to work on your bus, I have to like you. If I do not like you, I'm not interested in working on your bus. And there, there's a couple of clients that I worked for them once that I will never work for them again. They don't know this yet, but. It, <laughs> <laughs> will you be working on any more boats? Yes, for sure. Just don't know when. And we had that one guy, he's got the, the twin 16 V92s in his boat and he wants to come down and work on them. Um, I really want to make that happen, but it's, it's going to be a while before I get down to Florida. Um, should we contact Garmin about the sponsorship? <laughs> yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of start getting some sponsors. I, at, some, at some point, I, I think we'll get there. If an engine drops a valve, you must pull the head regardless of the engine, and that is correct. Well, technically, um, I did try to pull that valve back up and reconnect it, uh, but it was just a broken, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it wouldn't come up all the way. Yeah, you have, to, you have to remove the head. You can say a prayer and hope that things aren't horrible, like we did when we took mine off, and there was no major damage inside there. The head was perfectly fine. It was the Hail Mary of all dropped valves. It just... Did the V-Drive come before the bus or designed for the bus? They designed it, GM, GM designed that for the bus because they, they learned that if they put that, that engine, instead of going in long ways, they could turn it sideways, make it skinnier, and they can add an extra row of seats in the back. So it made the buses more profitable for the bus companies to be able to fit more people in the same length of bus. And they used to be limited by 35 feet. That was the, the legal length um, to, to do that. So. Uh, if you want to sell buses to bus companies, and if you if your bus has the same engine as everybody else, but you could fit a whole nother seat in there, um, it, well, it's just like airlines. I mean, although they still had a lot more room, they could, I it, very interesting if they took the airline configurations of today in a vintage bus. I'm curious to what the seating configuration would be. So, probably like 25 extra people <laughs> with no leg room. What is a split rim? Um, it's, a, it's a design of the rim where the rim comes apart. It's not a one piece rim. Uh, and there's a locking ring that holds it in together when it's pressure up against it. And um, they're called Widowmakers. You can look them up and Google them. Um, there's a couple, the, the, there's a really dangerous, dangerous kind of split rim. Um, they're, well, they're all dangerous, but there's a super dangerous kind that's illegal for, I don't know if it's illegal to work on them. I don't know if it's illegal to drive on them. I don't, I don't know what the law is on them, um, but they're they're very dangerous, and uh, I, I don't mess with them. Uh, Jack Tucci says, plan is to nail the Jakes on Friday. Hey, that's my Jake breaks. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get back. So when we, yeah, when we get back, we'll have them. And I don't think everything was with them, Jack, I, if I don't remember right. Um, but uh, yeah, he, most everything was, I'm gonna have to source a couple other things and taller valve cover, which I think I'm gonna have somebody mill me an extension to make mine taller because I don't wanna get rid of my valve cover because Joe signed it. I love the fact that it says Joe was here on my valve cover, so I'd hate to get rid of that. So I'm gonna try to, nobody make, they make an extension because the Jake brakes are taller, so the valve cover needs to be higher. They make for the stamped steel one, they make this little adapter ring you can add to it, but they don't make that for the cast aluminum, which is what I have. But I can just have somebody machine me one, uh, somebody with a CNC machine or something. I think I'll have them do that. Um, hopefully one of the viewers here on the channel will do that. I got a couple people I know that have CNC machines that have offered to do some work for me. So I'll, I'll reach out to them and uh, it would be a fun project to have them do. Any experience with a vacuum bleeding for cooling system? No, no, I don't, I don't, I, I no, no experience whatsoever. Please. Nor do I have experience with a vacuum cleaner at home. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that statement. <laughs> Please briefly discuss buffer screws and idle adjustment on 671 um, to prevent potential runaway. Well, I mean, the buffer screw just puts a little bit of pressure on the rack to keep it so things don't hunt. Uh, and it's just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, you just, if you rerun a rack on everything, if you don't back that off, it can have that previous setting kind of set 
farther on there. And then when you run the rack, if, if the injectors aren't in the same position, you, they all wanna be equal, but say you clocked them a little bit off, that buffer screw might be interfering then and giving it way too much fuel and not able to retract to even to the off position on there. So you, you just gotta make sure you follow the directions when you're doing that, that you back all that stuff off so nothing is inputting on there. Uh, what's your email address for scheduling? Uh, Scott at buscreasemonkey.com. S-C-O-T-T. Um, and again, make sure you put in the subject line something about scheduling for service on your bus because I, I literally get, I mean, there's days when I get a thousand emails in one day. So if you're trying to send me an email saying, hey, love the channel or whatever, chances are, I'm sorry, I just, it gets it gets lost in there. It, I try to read as many to them as possible. She, she freed up like 12,000 emails out of my thing a couple weeks ago and the neck and, and got it down to a manageable number. And like two days later, it was back up to the same number when she started. So uh, at some point you just give up. <laughs> um, will your bus skid in rain or on a heavy brake application? Uh, yeah, I, well, I've had the tire, I've, I've even had my front tires lock up on it and in, in, on wet surfaces uh, and doing a heavy braking, um, it, it happens. Uh, especially if it's like loose gravel and stuff like that too when it's wet out. So you just got to watch it. It is 1980 last year for GMC. I don't know. I don't know what year they stopped making buses. I don't know when it was and uh, they went to, they sold everything. And I think RTS had something to do with that too. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. All right, are we back on? Apparently our internet, I'd like to thank Spectrum for this high quality internet service <laughs> hopefully is it back are we back on i hope so okay uh do you use auto transformers in your bus i don't even know what that is so no auto transformers it'd be cool if he was a transformer Tra yeah i like the autobots <laughs> Love your channel, sir. Are you planning to put an Allison automatic in your silver sides? No, never going to do that. Never going to put an automatic in there. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. Somebody just said that. We got a lot of viewers. Only 270 or 247 thumbs up. Come on now. People forget to click the button. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I'm just Somebody trying said, to... said hello from Maine. I'm, there's a lot of just comments now that I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, how much does power steering cost for Lenny? Uh, it's going to cost me about $2,500 to do that upgrade. Uh, and that's using all old parts out of like a... I think it's FL70 Freightliner and a couple of other things and some custom parts have to be made and stuff like that too. But you can use existing parts from other platforms to make it work. Nothing fits perfectly like plug and play. There's modification to everything to do it. And uh, Gene, Gene's done it on several buses. He's got it down to a science. He's got a template and everything. It gets kind of bolted in and uh, that'll, that'll be nice to do. I just saw another super chat pop in there from uh, William Oswald. Did he do one earlier? Someone else last name? Um, do you mind local people taking photos with Lenny? Uh, no, people take pictures with Lenny all the time. Um, that's cool. I have people stop by my house all the time too. <laughs> I'll be out there working. What do you use for house batteries and why? Um, I have Rolls, uh, golf, cart bat golf cart batteries, lead acid. Um, but I, at some point I'm going to, uh, if I get enough money, I'm going to change them to go to lithium ion or something just to save weight because I have 1500 amp hours of house batteries in there. So I, I know I have over a thousand pounds of batteries, probably close to 1500 pounds of batteries in there. And if I could reduce that by a thousand pounds by going with something else, that would be really smart of me to do. Um, so at some point, I'm going to change the battery system from lead acid to something else. So. Add it to the list. 
add it to my list. I've got a whole list. I should bring, oh, it's on my phone, so I can't do it right now. But I have a list of all the improvements and things that I wanna do to the bus. So maybe I'll do a video one night of just that and go through and talk about it. Cause I went through and kind of associated, uh, um, yeah, that's probably what I'll do is the the, the life po for whatever they are. I, I don't know. What, I'll, uh, I have a few friends that I know that are very into that and I'll ask them exactly what the best is right now and what to use and all that. But like the Battleborn is probably what I was looking at originally, but they're like a thousand dollars a battery and that's basically one group 31, 100 amp hours. But that's really like 200 amp hours of lead acid since you can't drain lead acid beyond you know 50% or you shouldn't at least. I try not to, really hard not to. Um, so I, I could end up with you know 750 or, or 800 amp hours and just be as happy as what, with what I have now of something else. Um, I was getting ready, to, what was I talking about a second ago before I got into the battery thing? Shit. Um, Oh, my list of things that I want to do on the bus. I went through and all these things that I want to do and put a dollar value associated to them. And it, it's like over 40 grand worth of stuff. And by the time I'm done with that, that $40,000 will increase the resale value of my bus by $0. <laughs> so it's basically like, I want to do all this cool shit to my bus, but it's not going to mean anything to, um, which I'm never going to sell the bus anyway. So the resale value really doesn't matter to me. But the fact that it's like, you feel like you're throwing away money to do that, but it's things that are gonna make the bus better and more usable and like adding the turbo was on the list for that. And, um, you know, like Kelly got an extra kitchen cabinet that we added in the bus today. So she has a whole other storage for that. She wants a new couch and she wants a new countertop, um, all that kind of stuff. So. Don't blame the $40,000 on me. No, she's like maybe like. A thousand? I'll give you two. <laughs> uh, my eighty dollar cabinet, my two hundred dollar. Oh, you want? And my you want some? Couch. You want some fancy lights and? I can't find them. <laughs> yeah, we're having trouble finding so them. So anyone knows where to get cool, <laughs> rustic looking? I don't want to. I want everything to be twelve volt for my lighting system. I don't want to have to run it off of the inverter for my lighting. I just don't want to waste the battery power on doing that. Which, if I just add more solar, then I guess it doesn't matter. We can just do it the other way. I don't know. We'll see. Have she needs have... a footrest and more shoes, <laughs> a place to store her shoes. I'm just joking. <laughs> she... <laughs> I wear the same, the I know. same pair every day. Uh, they know that's not true, <laughs> but. <laughs> and my slippers. <laughs> have you ever considered using electric cooling fans or if possible a bypass blower? Uh, have I ever thought about using electric cooling fan? Yes, um, but probably not gonna do that. Uh, it's there, I mean, my friend Mark, uh, he's had his silver sides converted to an electric fan and he's drove it from North Carolina to uh, the West Coast multiple times with that. So when people tell you it can't be done, it can be done, um, I'm probably not gonna do it though, I, I'm fine. Although that would give you more horsepower for the engine, but then your alternator is producing more horsepower. Oh, but if you're using solar while you're going down the road, then you're not really taxing. So it would free up some horsepower on the engine. A bypass blower, I'm not gonna do that on my bus. Um, I'm gonna add a turbo, but I don't think I'm gonna need the bypass blower, um, but but maybe. Yeah, we're looking for like fancier stuff. I, um, we, didn't, we need some lights for the vanity in the, in the bathroom mirror. Um, I want something more rustic looking. More rustic kind of looking, and we just really haven't seen what we're looking at. I mean, we're not doing the right search terms for stuff. I try to look for sailboat stuff too, and like RV, 12 volt lighting. Um, I didn't want to have 110 stuff in the bathroom. I just didn't want to be wet with those kind of lights and stuff, since, since our whole bathroom is a wet room shower. But that was trying, that's really why I was looking for the 12 volt stuff for that. Uh, but Two, two Feathers said he can, he's got some cool stuff, so can we contact him. Uh, after watching the video of the cracked frame in, in Trunnion, are there special precautions when towing, lifting, or recovering? Um, you pretty much so for the most part. Everything, if you, if you have it towed, you know, you got to pull the axles and they definitely, they, there's these little like tow hook looking things on the front of your bus. Those are really just a decoration or for like complete, like a really light little flat tow on completely flat ground for moving it around in a yard or something like that. They're not made for long haul towing. Don't ever let them try to lift your bus by those things. They look like tow hooks in the front. They absolutely are not made for lifting because they're, it's, you know, it's a monocoque construction. So it, 
you gotta, if you do it, you gotta lift it from the axles. You can tow it by the axle uh, with a regular style tow truck that gets up under there and lifts the wheels up. You can do that, but I don't recommend that for anything more than a short, short tow. And definitely make sure you pull both, not just one, but both axles if you're gonna do that. Um, and then number two, I highly recommend that no matter what, you don't even do that. You go ahead and just get a land all or a flatbed that it goes on. But then you gotta watch it because those guys screw your shit up too. So like the angle's not right, it'll drag the, the ass end of the bus, you'll scrape it all up and that kind of, you, you gotta watch those tow truck driver guys. Um, especially like that one MCI that we just worked on that the guy wanted to, to be able to get the wheel, he busted that front lock off with a sledgehammer. Like that's the most ignorant thing ever for somebody to do. You could use a bolt cutter to get the lock off or, uh, and and he, he left his phone number with the people at that place where it was at because it, it was a flood where they were at. He used at the truck stop down the road. So there's a lot of other things there too. They should have just, whatever. I don't know, got it's off on really a rant. cool to see the guy that came into Jeffrey's. Yeah, today. that one video of um, changing and uh, removing a transmission in a half day. That video had a cool tow truck come in and grab that bus at the end. That was a really cool tow truck with the oh, dual think, steering on it. I, did not think I didn't think that. I couldn't. I would have a hard time driving that 40 foot bus off the property, period. Yet alone, this guy did it attached to a tow truck and got it off there and didn't put it into the culvert ditch out front. And it was a my bus is hard to get in and out of his property. That, that was amazing watching that guy do that. That was that was that was a cool tow truck driver. Will you be in Brooksville, Florida when you come down? I'm not sure where Brooksville is. I have no is. idea where Brooksville, Florida is. Don't, never heard of it. Um, don't know where it is. We'll look it up. If you invite us and it's nice. I want to try to get down to uh, the Keys too. Um, I talked to a, a kid on the phone uh, a couple weeks ago that him and his dad um, have a bus, uh, an MC5, I think it was. And um, they're having some problems with the transmission on it. And it's still a seated coach, but he was really cool to talk to. And I'd like to try to get down there and visit him in the Keys. Um, that'd be fun for him. He, he seemed to really like the channel a lot. And uh, he was really excited about it. I uh, just had a super chat in here. Shout out from the Beaver State. Big fan. Um, I, I don't. What, what is the Beaver State? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know where the Beaver State is. I'm going to guess maybe that would be like Washington I would say maybe, or Oregon. Oregon. I, 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 I was going to say Oregon or Washington. Isn't Oregon College and the Beavers their thing? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I, <laughs> We're not really smart. I'm not really smart. <laughs> if you haven't caught on to that. And then another, I saw a super chat from uh, Jack Craybaum. Uh, be safe on trip. Thank you, Jack. I will try to be. I will go the speed limit or close, very, very close to it. You lie. You're going to floor it and just go. The speed limit is 70. I you go can drive up. it like you stole it. Sometimes you got to go a couple miles an hour over the speed limit just to keep up with everybody else so that it's safer. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's how it works. <laughs> You're not kidding anybody. <laughs> And so I just said, yes, Oregon is the Beaver State. I love, I love Oregon. Mm -hmm. My sister lives there in Portland and it's beautiful there. We she, enjoy it every time we go. I forgot the name of her subdivision or whatever. Ten, Anderson, subdivision. Anderson, Andersonville? Mm -hmm. so, no. That would be your mom in Chicago. That's in Chicago? Oh. <laughs> well, whatever it is. It's, it's all, my sister where she lives there is all um, craftsman style homes and it's just amazing. I, I, that her whole neighborhood, all these big giant trees and cool craftsman style houses and every single house is different and it's just, it's so pretty there. How much do you know about, uh, I think it's supposed to say 12B71? Well, twice as much as a 671. There's no difference. They're, they're all the same. It's just a matter of how many holes are in it. I, <laughs> Um, some, some might have two blowers on there or, you know, two turbos or something, but, um, I think I just saw another super chat pop up on there or is that one from before? Nope. That was itself before. How many fire extinguishers do you have on your bus? I have two. One in the bedroom and one in the kitchen. One in the bedroom, one in the kitchen. We maybe should have something down in the bay to, if we needed to grab yeah, well, it's always best to have one on the way out. If there's a fire, I'm not, you know, it's it's gonna, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I know you should have one by the door too when you go out, but it looks ugly over there. Um, a speeding ticket in a vintage vehicle is like a badge of honor. Love the channel. That's from Jeffrey Leaker, maybe. 
Super chat. Um, yeah, I'm like, well, like Sean said the one time, he's like, you know, if a cop pulls me over and gives me a speed, I'm gonna kiss him right on the lips. <laughs> and then I'm gonna frame that thing and hang it on the wall of the bus. And I'd be like, I got a speeding ticket in my bus. <laughs> my bus couldn't even speed when I first got it in most places. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't a school zone or something. I, tried. I would never do that. But um, yeah, on the highway, if I get a speeding ticket, that I will laugh my butt off. <laughs> Kelly will not. She keeps saying, if you get a ticket, I'm gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> Because <laughs> it would be like right now it would be a double whammy because I'm sure they would like a loud exhaust and whatever else they could hit me with or whatever. But um, yeah. Um, ever wish you had a... I, I, somebody just said they're a cop. I, I, would, I would ask first if I could kiss them on the lips. I wouldn't just do it. <laughs> you would not do it at all. Now I can see Sean doing it, but not you. I'm sure he's going to be real handsome. I doubt it's going to be a woman cop. It <laughs> could be, but... <laughs> I'm not gonna really kiss him. I can never see you even asking. <laughs> I, I definitely promise you I would ask. They would say no. Don't stand by me. <laughs> I'd be like, it's an honor. You would be too embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, probably. I would ask before you would. Like her. Okay, sorry. That was how you pronounce his last name. Yeah. <laughs> Ever wish you have a Cine Cruiser with a big V8 with an Allison? Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I ha I've had an automatic in Benny, and he was definitely a lot more fun to drive, easier and more, you could just hop in it and not worry about whatever situation you're in. Um, as we're driving the manual, you're thinking a little bit more about where you're stopping at or, you know, uh, how much distance you're leaving, because you know, if you're going to roll backwards or, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, Scenic Cruiser, I, don't, I wouldn't really care what was in it. I, I'd probably still prefer, because because the Scenic Cruiser has a T-Drive, you can throw some crazy ass, you know, you can get a really, really good trans manual transmission with a lot of gears in it. That's probably what I would do. I, I wouldn't want to be limited to an automatic. Uh, I just saw another uh, G Daddy just did a super chat uh, when traveling. I attend this fall from Florida to Colorado, stop in Beaumont, Texas. Check out my work in progress, 1955-4104. Um, are we on I-10 for that trip? I don't know, but Sen's got an email about that, um, and I'll see if it works in our schedule. Yeah. If it works that we can do that, that would be great. Do you carry spare parts for Lenny on your trips? Absolutely. Uh, I carry a spare starter, because my engine is a left-hand rotation engine, and a left-hand starter is very hard to find. So I have, I have spare starter. I got, you know, spare belts, uh, things like that, but... Um, most of everything's a day away. You can have it shipped overnight. So, you know, you can spend the night wherever you're at if you got to get something. But I do have a lot, you know, well, I carried a valve. Why did I, I had brand new valves when it dropped the valve. Why did I have that valve? I don't know why I had new valves. Uh, injector cups, all that kind of stuff. I do, I mean, I carry stuff like that um, just in case. But there's, the, the starter is the big, the big thing I think to carry. I just saw another uh, super chat coming from Andy Francis. Fran, is that, sorry if I, I apologize again for the names. Uh, have you ever thought of doing a separate Bus Grease Monkey channel that people could post updates and up videos of their buses after you left? Uh, they edit and only have, so like like they could continue with the thing. Yeah, and and I'd like for them to maybe send me some videos and stuff like that. But most of the time you get to see it. It's so like we're gonna go back to Lance's, so you'll see his bus driving with that new transmission. We're gonna go back to that uh, pre-war silver sides and get that on the road, so you'll see that again. But yeah, like George getting his bus on the road and stuff like that. If yeah, I think it, maybe they'll I can get people to send me some videos and then we'll just update them and do a video of stuff like that if they want to do that. I don't. I think having a whole nother channel is just a whole nother thing I don't want to deal with. A lot of them have their own channels too, though, because they want to, and you can follow the stories and stuff. I think it'd be really cool if Frank had his own channel. I'd follow Frank on if Frank had a YouTube channel. I would too. What is the oldest bus you worked on? Um, oh, what was that? A 1917? What was that bus we were working on up at Hibbings? That, that uh, Diamond T? Um, I don't remember what year it was. Was it? Whatever, whatever, whenever Diamond T's were, I don't remember what year it was. I, I, it's, I could probably go back to my Facebook page and find it, but um, it was a, it was, it was old. Maybe it was 20s, 30s. Was it 30s, 30s? I don't know. I don't know. It was God, old. I don't know. It was old. It was gas. 
What do you know about a crown bus with a 671? Um, I've worked on them. They're, they're on my channel. Um, I think we're going to we'll work on some more. There, it's, it's 671 completely lays flat on its side midship. Um, it's a really unusual install. But other than that, it runs exactly the same. It's the same engine. Um, I just saw a super chat from uh, Lime A23. I didn't see a comment, though. Maybe you forgot to type it. Or if I see something pop up on there, I'll answer it. And then another super chat from DJ O'Connors. Um, what would you recommend if someone is looking to purchase a vintage bus? Uh, what would I recommend? Like, figure out how much parking space you got if you want a 30, 30 foot, 35 foot, or 40 foot. Um, I, I, 4104 is a great entry level bus. 4106, if you want something a little bit newer with a little bit more power. Depends on what kind of driving or traveling you're going to do. Are you West Coast or are you East Coast, maybe? Um, if you want the power, something's maybe got Jake brakes. If you're out in the mountain areas, they're nice to have. Um, and just make sure that whatever you're buying, you've got an extra, you know, 10, 10 grand at any time just sitting around because you can, you can go through 10 grand real quick. But it's still more fun than having a modern sticks and staple thing. How do you wash clothes on the road? <laughs> you don't wash clothes ever. I totally, we went to a laundromat one time. <laughs> And I blew up a washing machine there big time. <laughs> my, my work clothes were in there and we went over and we opened it up and it was just filled with nasty black water with like oil on top of it and none of the water drained out of it or anything. And I'm like, oh God, what do we do now? <laughs> we typically don't wash clothes on the road. We have enough with. I take there. enough with. Like I'll go to Walmart and buy like shirts and shorts there uh, or pants there. And the shirts are like $3 a piece. So, you know, if I buy an extra, you know, 10 or 15 of them to have, um, but yeah, like that last trip, you know, I'll, I'll go a month or even, you know, we can go six weeks, easily. six weeks with, with a clean new pair of underwear every day and, and new shirt. And <laughs> we usually save everything for when we come home for a few days in between. Yeah. And sometimes we, but sometimes we have to go to a laundromat and do, do a few things. So I'm not going to put a washing machine and dryer on the bus. There's no room for that. Some of the, the bigger buses have that and that, that's nice to have, but, uh, that we won't have that in a silver sides ever. Skip ahead again for me. So let's see. So if you see anything popping up. Um, Yellow Coach, if somebody's asking, that was what GM bought Yellow Coach. Yellow Coach came with, up with that design um, first, and then I don't know if GM liked it just liked it and then they bought it. But yeah, the, the, the pre-war silver sides, that was by, my transmission actually still says yellow coach on the side of it. So in 1947, either they had a surplus of them or they were still kind of the same company or something. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know all the history, but go ahead. Okay, I apologize again if, we, if I missed anything because it just threw me way down and then it won't let me go back. Okay, yeah. Apparently so, like the cue for her to be able to view stuff, it- It, it only goes back so far. Yeah. If Scott would quit talking so much. Sorry. <laughs> would a fuel cutoff valve or switch stop a runaway? If it was running away on fuel, yes, it would. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times they run away on engine oil as well. And if it's sucking oil through the blower seals or the turbo is, you know, ingesting oil and feeding the engine to run on oil, then uh, fuel cutoff isn't going to do a damn thing for you. An air cutoff will, which is why the 71 series have a, a flapper on them to, to do that too. Have you tailgated at a college football game with your bus? Hmm. Nope. Nope. I am uh, not a huge, I mean, I like watching college football on TV, but I've never, never been to a, well, I've been, we went to a couple, we went to a couple of IU games. I had a friend that was a punter at IU. We didn't have the bus then though. No, we didn't have the bus. Do you run number two all the time? I run to go number two <laughs> quite often, <laughs> but number two diesel fuel. Yes. Um, that's mostly what's available everywhere, so. Mm. Have you ever worked on a 149? No. Um, I've seen them. They're really cool. I mean, to, like their pistons are much, much larger. <laughs> The same basic principle though. I mean, I think once you work on any two stroke, you understand how to work on another two stroke, so. 
it, it'd be a fun, uh, fun experience. You know, if somebody invited me to come out and work on one or tear one down, that would be really fun. I would def definitely do that. Uh, going to, it's a FMB this winter, so Fort Myers Beach, I assume. Yes, I'm moving in. Yes. They're not going to get rid of me. <laughs> told, Sean's going to make us a, he's going to get us off the gravel. He's going to put us on some pavement. <laughs> I'm fine with the gravel. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't feel obligated, Sean. I was just hinting again that. <laughs> don't do it, Sean. <laughs> Were several sides that first to place the engine in the rear? I think they were the first, were they the first modern diesel coach? Was that what, so, I don't know. I, I, for some reason, that's what my brain is telling me right now, but that may not be true. But for some reason, I'm thinking the silver side was the first modern diesel engine bus, but I, I could be wrong on that. I, that's just something I'm thinking of. Why did the scenic cruisers originally have two engines? Because the 8V71 was not invented yet. Um, it was, it was, there was no such thing. So in World War II, they had come up with really intricate systems for putting, you know, four four seventy ones together and making you know an eight cylinder out of that or two six seventy ones together and making a twelve seven you want power but basically two engines coupled together with different things uh, and so that's the technology the scenic cruiser came out with but it was very finicky and they had a really hard time keeping it uh the two engines synchronized and balanced and equal power and that kind of thing so then they came up with the designs for the 8v71 and that's why uh, Greyhound sent every single scenic cruiser into, I think it was Marmon Harrington in Indianapolis, uh, to have all of those twin 471s torn out and the 8V71 power plants put in. There is no existing uh, scenic cruiser with twin 471s. There, there is no such thing anymore. Every single one of them was documented and sent into them to be replaced. Okay, I don't know how many more questions you answer after 10. I don't care. I'll keep going as long as people are watching. I'll keep going. I don't care. We're we're at home, so. I'm... I just wanted to make sure you knew. Uh, can you convert a D deck Detroit to a mechanical injection? Uh, yes, you can. Um, especially the earlier D decks, like a one, is really easy to do. Um, but everything can be changed and go backwards on it. It's a lot of work, though. Um, I've not done it. I've heard people talk about it. I've read threads where people on, on forums have done it. Um, I've, I've not done it myself. Um, diesels don't normally like cold temps, but my 671TA has started at 22 degrees by barely bumping the key. Is that a good sign of a well-tuned engine? That's a very good sign. If you're, my bus didn't even want to start the other day at, at 40 at, until like 20 seconds. So, and I got really good compression, but, uh, and usually a turbo has lower compression uh, cylind uh, pistons in it. So the turbo is not adding anything to that when you're trying to start it. Um, usually they're very, very hard to start when it's cold like that. That's kind of a miracle. Okay, hi Scott, I have a 1951 PD 4103, uh, 0055. It has the oil bath air cleaners. They are all rusted out. I wanted to change to paper air filters. Uh, what should I look for in the junkyard? Well, the easiest thing to do is you can get a filter that'll actually fit individual paper cartridges that fit up in those air canisters. Just pull them out, make sure the seal at the top and the bottom, uh, and you can just keep using the same system that you have and just put a regular paper. Put th you have three, you should have three, three different chambers for that one. Um, I pull those out and you can put it three individual paper canisters that fit those. I can't remember the model number. I want to say I had a Wix number. It, I have that information somewhere on a video somewhere with those part numbers um, and they, they will fit in there. And um, that's the easiest thing to do. So you can still keep the system. Um, but if you're, everything's all rusted out and it's not worth it, then there's no one number I can just tell you to go out and get it. Um, 
you just got to go look and see what fits. I, I, that's why mine's not changed because we went out there and took some measurements and I couldn't find the exact thing that I was looking for. Okay, someone just said overdrive with a question mark. It's not really an option for me on my bus. I wish it was. I don't. As far as I know, it's not. Um, there's just no such thing. That V drive just screws everything up. Does a drop box and a flexible have a seal between the axle oil and the drop box, or do they share the oil? I don't know. I've never had one of those apart. Um, I assume it's the same. I think it's the same drop box that's in an Eagle. Um, from what they look like to me, they look like the same. So an Eagle guy might be able to answer that question. Um, the drop box is real finicky, and um, you definitely want to make sure there's oil in it. I, I, I'm going to say that they're their own thing because they're so much higher than the differential. There's no way they're sharing the same fluid. There, there's got to be. It's got to be separate. How's your scenic cruiser finger? It's good. Mostly. It's not <laughs> even black and blue. Just your nail. I should. I was going to draw little windows on it. <laughs> I should have done that. Have you ever worked on a crown bus? Yes. There's videos of it too on, on my change. Okay, just a lot of comments. Looks like a silver okay. says now my finger. Yeah, it's just a dumb fat finger now. WD-40 is a great starting fluid to use. It's a lot less volatile than, than which, which most starting fluids that you buy nowadays are very low ether count anyways, so they're not nearly as bad as what it used to be. Um, but WD-40 will start an engine pretty easy and it's a lot less hard on them. So yeah, it's, I, I rec if you're gonna use it, that's what I recommend that you use um, if, if you've got it. And still be very, very sparse. Don't. I had one guy that he was having problems with his bus. He said, I tried starting the starting fluid. I'm like, well, how much starting fluid? He goes, well, I sprayed it for like 10 seconds. I'm like, oh my God. You're lucky it didn't blow it up. Luckily the flapper was closed on it, so it wasn't getting any oxygen, so it wouldn't start. But a 10 second spray of starting fluid would be insane. I literally just, psh, it'll start. What is the ratio of your rear end in the bus? Uh, it's a 4.125, I think is what it is, so yeah. What about AGM batteries? Uh, they're basically still lead acid batteries. I mean, they have still have lead plates in them. There's no, I mean, that, that's, uh, they don't boil off the water and stuff like that. So they're a little bit, little bit easier on the maintenance side of it, but there's no weight saving. And my issue is really the weight issue. And they're usually like twice as much money. I don't think it's worth it. Someone's saying, Scott, post that list. Christmas is coming. Have you been good? <laughs> I've been no, good. Scott, been a good boy? I've been good. I think I shook my head no when I was saying, I've been good. <laughs> I joke that I'm going to get a water bottle and squirt them every time. Oh, she's, not she's to. got this new thing now where, like, <laughs> you know how you train a dog or people, we don't do train our dogs that way, but they do it with like a water, like a squirt bottle, a water bottle and so they give a little spray of water when the dog's doing something bad or whatever she now has a thing where she, if i'm doing something wrong she'll just say squirt squirt like pretending like she had a water bottle and she was spraying me so all kinds of dumb things that i'm doing leaving the toilet lit up squirt squirt you know <laughs> you leave it up and then you go down the road and, and then turn, it, a turn a corner and it falls down and makes down. a really loud noise yeah. and you say what's that she needs a swear jar did you say a bad word <laughs> I oh, just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to behave myself. I drop more F-bombs than Scott, usually. I've never had a spirit steer tire blow out. Somebody just saw that question go up on there, but I, uh, I have, I keep new tires on my steer tires. I'm very cautious about that. And then if you go back to like January of this year, my tire was like four years old and had a big sidewall split happen in it while we were down in Florida. And, uh, I refused to drive it. They wanted me to take it to a shop to replace it, hand cooked it, and I said, no, I'm not driving it like that. And then, I, because they couldn't find an actual hand cooked tire, hand cooked paid for me to put uh, Toyos on my on my bus this year. They didn't pay the whole amount, but they paid a lot of it. And they paid for the second tire that there was nothing wrong with, just because I didn't want to have a Toyo on one wheel and a hand cook on the other. I can't believe we still have 650 people watching this right now. Okay, 
I'm, I'm trying to get to our next question. Um, has your bus ever leaked inside in the rain? Has my bus ever leaked inside in the rain? Yes, I've had it raining inside the bus before. Um, but my roof doesn't leak, uh, especially since we have that. Uh, well, first I used bus coat on there and that stopped most of the leaks from uh, around a rivet or uh, we had a, a tree that had fallen down on that bus before I got it. So it had a couple uh, little issues up there. And then the previous owner had drilled multiple holes and air conditioners and all kinds of stuff. But now we had the bus coat on there and then we added the Henry's on there that completely sealed everything. No rain comes through the roof part of the, well, I say that, um, but then there was recently we came to, a, it was raining outside while we were driving. And then the first time I hit the brakes, like a stream of water came down from the ceiling. That was before you did that last coat of Henry's. I okay. Think. Yeah. I just remember that. I was like, another coat on there. yeah, it needs, it needs another coat of Henry's. We didn't, we only got one coat on it that day, but it was so hot out there. So. And we did have, when we were parked at an angle, Yes, if I'm parked really steep to one side, I have a window that will leak inside the bus, but only if it's tipped. I, got, I need and new, new rubber yeah. and raining in that direction. Um, can you pull a toad with a silver side? Yeah, and I, I have before. I have a, a, a Volkswagen thing that will pull behind there, but it's, it's honestly, it's more difficult to, to deal with having that, especially because my turn radius is so terrible on that thing. Um, it literally does take 40 acres to turn that thing around. And with the toad, if I got to back up somewhere, you got to drop the toad. You can't just back up with that thing back there. And that thing, it really is a thing back there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's easier to just not have it and then take an Uber somewhere if we need a car or usually my clients will let me borrow a car. Most of them have a spare car or something or they'll take me somewhere. Typically, we just stop in between clients and get what we need. I think I'm actually losing my voice <laughs> talking so much. Because you talk too much. <laughs> Um, the size of your freshwater tank? Uh, 100 gallons. What part of a silver slides is no longer available but should be reproduced? There's nothing. Nothing that's not available. Have you ever explained why you went from... I'd like to have the stop sign back in, in the back of mine, the, the stop lamp. Um, but Mark had those reproduced. I just couldn't afford it at the time. And um, someday I'll get, I'll get that on there, the, the rear sign. The, there, was, there was glass that, that had come in there, uh, or say Greyhound lines, and then uh, there was a big red. As far as I know, Silver Size was the first vehicle that had the third brake light in it. So right across the middle, it said stop, and it was a brake light built in that drum head in the back on the rear. And then uh, there was a picture of the dog that was in the glass too. I just saw a super chat come through. Um, from Brandon Ray, when you come into North Carolina. I'm not gonna, Tyler's gonna be there, I think working on that, doing that rebuild hopefully soon. And then uh, I won't be back until next year sometime. Ready for the next question? Yes. Have you ever explained why you went from GM New Look Fishbowl to your current bus? I just liked the style of it. I the first when I, when I when I got that first bus, if you remember, if you watch the how I became the bus grease monkey video, um, you'll know that I had no interest in buses. I just got that because I it was a cool hippie bus prop for our photo stuff, and then that made me fall really hard into buses, um, and then. After I started learning about buses, I found out about this thing that was a Silver Sides and uh, just thought it was the neatest looking thing ever. This, the design of it, the, the styling, I just thought, you know, somebody put effort into making that thing look cool and I just fell in love with it. So that's when I found one for sale. I think I paid 3200 bucks for that bus when I bought it, but it looked like a $3,200 bus when I bought it. It had a bent rod, tree fell down on the roof, broken windows all over it. And, it was nasty. Radiator was broken half. Yeah, it was. It was terrible. She wouldn't even go on it. I pulled. When I got it home, she walked outside. She took one step in. And she said, "I'm not going in that thing." It was disgusting. Uh, speeding ticket is nothing. Get yourself an exhibition of speed citation. Now that's bragging. Experience talking here. I don't know what that is. Oh, is that like drag racing or something? Maybe. I don't know. That's a uh, from Limey Twenty Three. I haven't had a ticket, knock on wood, in anything since I was... You just jinxed yourself. I know. I do genuinely drive the speed limit with plus or minus 
three or four miles an hour, always. Unless I'm not paying attention and Kelly says, hey. Which is 90% of the time. Oh. <laughs> It's not. Hey, Scott, what's, what's the speed limit? 55. How fast are you going? 72. <laughs> <laughs> That's because it just dropped. I, I missed the sign. Uh, do you ride your bikes much? Uh, we had been for a while, and, but we took them off on the last trip, and it's cold now, so I'm not taking... We, we discussed that we are not taking the bikes to Minnesota. It's too we cold. We were going to, but... We were going to do that when it was, we were going to be in Minnesota a month earlier, but now that it's now, we're not. We get to too many places where we're stuck in the middle of nowhere down gravel roads and it's just too hard to ride them sometimes, but. She told me I could buy a one wheel. I'm going to get a one wheel, which that's no exercise whatsoever, but <laughs> I'm going to have one wheel. <laughs> You're such a little kid. <laughs> I'm going to have a one wheel. If you don't know what it is, look it up. <laughs> I'm gonna get the pint though. It's 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 like half the price. Someone says not all tow operators are hacks. No, they're not. Oh, absolutely not. But a lot of them have never seen a vintage bus and they don't want to know what to do with it. And and those things on the front, a lot of modern buses have those and they're hooked to a steel frame and they can lift on them. But uh, we just had a guy in Indiana uh, have his a couple years ago uh, an MC7 picked up by a tow truck and they lifted on the front and they bent the whole frame, totaled the bus out. And that was the tow truck driver's fault. Uh, Andrew Poland, love your channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Dr. No, how many Krispy Kremes can you eat? Why Zero, because they're not vegan. Yeah, I'm vegan, dude. I don't eat donuts. I actually eat really, really healthy. You wouldn't know that. Question here, mostly just comments. Uh, best or most interesting bus repair story? Um, most interesting? I just said best or most interesting. I don't know. I mean, one of my favorite ones was the 3701 out in Oregon, um, that teal bus. That was a really fun one because it had been sitting for like 20 some years, 26 years, I forgot how long. And it just, it was buried down to the axle in the dirt under that tree. And that was just fun because, I mean, we started that thing up and it was running and that thing kept up with me on the highway. That Dave, Dave's bus. I. I love it. That was a fun one. How much do you charge to rescue a bus? Um, I don't, everything's hourly, so there's no, I can't give you a price on things, but um, I charge a dollar a mile to get to wherever it is. And then I do have some minimum. So if I'm driving for a day um, versus four days to get to you, if I drive four days, then you're gonna have a, a lot higher minimum for hours. Um, but I would say most of them have been, you know, three or $4,000 in labor on a lot of those buses that have been sitting for a decade or more, uh, that we brought back and got on the road. It's none of them have been crazy amount of money. Um, the, this one right now, the, the, the silver sides, you know, he's like six grand in labor. Um, and he'll probably another couple grand. Uh, but that, that was an that bus was rough and it had a few other issues on it, but um, but I still think even if the bus wasn't as rough, you had still been doing most of that work anyway. Oh yeah. The only thing that was extra to it was that whole frame support issue, which was a couple of days. So he, All that other stuff was going to be done. No he's probably going to be ahead of the game for what he paid for the bus and the work that's getting done. Yeah. I think. Yeah. There's, so, there's, but again, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that were saying that, you know, scrap the bus and it wasn't worth, but. I don't agree with that one bit. He he's gonna come out ahead, I think. It's gonna in the be long cool. run. It'll, and it's gonna be the way he wants it. He's gonna have the coolest bus. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of installing a fire sus suppression system? Yep. Yeah, I have. Um 
I'll probably get the kind that has the little hoses, the cheaper kind. It's a little plastic tube that runs all around the engine bay. And then when a hole burns through the plastic tube, then it's the, you know, there's a pressurized the whole time with the fire suppression on it. Uh, at some point I probably will add that. But that being said, there's not a whole lot of things that catch fire on a 671. Uh, like my bus, the big thing for catching fire back there was those, uh, the axle, the drive shaft break. People adjust those wrong or a piece of road debris will get caught in there and that'll catch fire or break fire or something like that, which I wouldn't run a suppression system on that anyways. I run the TPMS system, so it monitors the t tire temperatures, which would help me notice ahead of time if there's a, something like that going on. Um, I think having the rear view cameras and stuff too, if you would see smoke coming out of there or something like that, um, all, all that kind of stuff. I think, you know, you're eliminating the risk of that by paying attention to things too, so. It's not very much. Most of the bus fires and stuff are like generators overheating, um, things like that. What size exhaust are you going to put on? Say four, four inch inlet, five inch out is what we have right now that's on there. It'll be the same. We're not changing anything drastic. Are buses from the 1960s up in northern states worth buying yeah you just want to look at them first because most of them again they're all aluminum or 90 percent aluminum but you still got to look at them and see what's going on but yeah they're it, ideally you could find one from a southern place but you don't really know where they even if they were from south a lot of times they would have run north anyway so uh what's the most difficult repair you've done on a detroit diesel has anybody been in this thing the whole entire time? Like you, like you started it. I'm just curious how, how, how long have we been on here? <laughs> I'm just curious if anybody has stuck with us the whole entire time. Feel free to <laughs> let me know if you, if you've been here. Yes. Somebody's been here from the beginning. Um, <laughs> I can't believe how long we've been on here. I'm sorry. What was the question that you asked? Most difficult repair you've done on a Detroit diesel. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's really that hard. Um, anytime the transmission's got to come out or the engine cradle's got to come off, I'm always like, uh, I don't want to do that, but it's got to be done and you got to do it. Um, but there's nothing difficult. They, uh, when I was up at Stan's last year working, um, we were rebuilding an engine and we pulled one and then we thought we had another block we we're going to be able, or another one engine we were going to be able to rebuild and we tore that one out and then it had spun, uh, maybe it was five, five out of the seven main bearings had all spun. <laughs> and then I was like, crap, this block's not even good right now. So, um, so I went to rebuild one engine. It took parts from three engines to be able to do that. And that, that was difficult, but not, that was still fun. I mean, it, it's exciting to turn something over and, you know, we've stripped the engine down and then flip it over. And then the crank is, you see all the, the spun main bearings in there and Heather just texted me. I wasn't paying attention, but he said that question was from Russell. I, you know what? That that's I paused when I read that. I saw F one Russ something else or whatever, and I'm like, that's almost Russell's email address. So his YouTube thing is really close to his other. Um, so yeah, hey Russ, what's up? We miss you. Yeah, we miss him. He's, he's our buddy. He comes up here from. He's from London area. Um, he's a Brit. And uh, he lives in Florida. He worked for Disney for a long time. And he doesn't now though, does he? I don't no. think so. And then uh, he would come up, we met him through another friend of ours. He'd come up for the F1 race when they used to be here in Indy. And then every year after that, he would come up for the Indy 500 and stay here and, and hang out with us. And the, the 100th running of the Indy 500, he was here for the whole, like almost the whole month of May for that too. So that was fun. Greetings from Tasmania, Australia. What turbo are you going to install and are you changing the pistons and liners again? Yes and no. Um, I am going to put a big turbo on there and I am not going to change the pistons right away. And I'm gonna have a little bit more kind of wastegate on it. And then if, when it needs to be rebuilt for sure, again, I don't know how long it's gonna last, what I'm doing to it, uh, then when I do a final rebuild on it, then I'll probably put the turbo piston. You don't have absolutely have to do that, but it depends on how much 
boost you're adding. Um, and I'm probably not going to do a ton of boost right now, but we'll see. It's just, if you enjoy working on your stuff, don't do it all at once. Just do a little bit here, a little bit there. Do it one way. Try it another way. See what you like better. I don't care what the book says. Joe told me I could do it either way. <laughs> How often do you replace your rubber? <laughs> Every time. No. <laughs> I giggled when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my steer tires, I'll never go over like seven years, maybe eight years at the most. I'll, I'll never definitely eight years. They're, they're not on my steer tires anymore. That's just me. Uh, on, on my drive tires, I'd go 10 years and not be concerned about it. Um, but steer, I paid. And but that's only by looking at the tire. So if, if it's six years old and it's it's dry rotten and cracking on the sides, it's not going to be on my steer tires. Would a right-hand starter wired backwards work? No. No, they, they don't work that way. They you could you could take the the positive and negative terminals on a right-handed starter and reverse them, and it still turns right. It that the, they I don't know I'm not an electric motor genius, but that's they don't work that way. They they will not turn the other way around. Do you eat out or cook your own meals on the bus? Kelly mostly cooks our own meals on the bus. We rarely eat out. Yeah, very very rarely do we eat out. She's an amazing cook. She's a fabulous cook. She has an Instapot. I told her she should have her own YouTube cooking channel because she cooks such good stuff. And with the Instapot and everything and the, um, My Vitamix. her Vitamix and yeah, she, she goes to town cooking on the bus. I, I eat very, very delicious meals every day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Are you aware automatic Resetting circuit breakers cause a lot more fires on buses and motorhomes. Mm. Uh, no, but I understand why. That would make sense. Um, and I've added a whole bunch of automatic resetting circuit breakers to my bus. <laughs> I was very tired of changing fuses. <laughs> Most of mine were just stupid, stupid little things. My, my whole electrical system on my bus absolutely needs to be replaced. 90% of the wiring on my bus is original 1947 wiring. Um, and it's to the point where the, it's fabric coated wiring and the fabric is falling off or has rubbed off. And like I've been spraying like entire wire bundles with liquid, um, what is it called? Uh, li liquid, or, no, li no, liquid electrical tape, <laughs> just to, to keep the wires away from each other. But um, it's gonna take some time. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of time, and the bus is gonna be down when I do it, and it's gonna get done. I, I will do it at some point. But right now, everything is working on there electrically, um, except for one thing: my, my marker lights. Oh, my electric horn has never worked either. But I don't even think it has. I never even looked for it. I don't think it's on there. But the air horn works great. What is the longest bus you can get? 45 foot Bravo is probably the biggest, but they're like some of the city buses where they have like the articulated ones, those are longer than that. But I don't think they're allowed, legally allowed to drive on the highway. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't even know what the legal length is and because someone, you can pull a trailer and stuff like that too. What bus has the most square footage? Probably like a Neoplan something would be my guess, but I don't know. Oh, I just saw Super Chat come in. William Oswald. I think he's done a couple of these. Um, yep, keep them on the road. You have buses. I have mid-90s Chevys. Same person. Keep them alive. did the whole freak out thing on the end here. Okay, so. so her thing just skipped way ahead, so she's missing a bunch of questions. If you've been waiting to get your question answered, especially if you lost it twice already, sorry. Uh, Somebody just said a 60 foot articulated can drive on the highway in Canada. Okay. I never, I've never seen an articulated bus on the highway here in, in the States before. Is there any other starter fluid safer to use besides ether? Uh, WD-40 works great. 
I just saw another super chat here from James Hayden. Again, I've been watching for over two hours in my dumb smart TV, but have to go online. Do Detroit's have heaters to start them? Um, they don't have to have a heater, but I always recommend using a block warmer or some kind of a heater like that. There's no glow plugs or anything like that. It's, it's all done by compression heat. So when the cylinder smashes the air in there, the hair gets up to the certain temperature and, it, and it'll ignite the fuel when it sprays in. Um, and they're very sensitive to cold weather because of the compression's not there and even the cold fuel spraying in can, can stop that from happening. So um, whenever it's below like 50 degrees, I use a block warmer just to make it easier on the engine. Uh, Rogan, a trail Trailways Golden Eagle as a kid. Ever work on one of those? Uh, I don't think I have. What is your favorite year in make? I I mean, silver sides. That, that's kind of a silly question, I think. Um, so 47 silver sides. Um, but any, 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 any of the older, I love Cena Cruiser. I, I'm probably more partial to GMs. Um, but that being said, like an MC6, I think it's just the coolest thing ever. And I, I like some of the old, the other MCs. Uh, I like the, uh, f the future liner is really cool. <laughs> Maybe I lied. Okay. A future liner is my favorite make and model, but I, that's not in my budget. <laughs> and there was only 13 of them made and seven of them or eight of them still around, something like that. How about capacitors rather than batteries? Yeah, and the starting for batteries using capacitors, they, uh, when we were at BusCon last year, there was a company that I looked at that had basically a Group 31 battery box that was just filled with capacitors. And you could take a very low charged battery in that thing. It's it made for, co for cold weather starting uh, and it would turn an engine over like nothing in cold weather. And it would just take a few, you know, a minute or two to charge back up and do it again. Uh, those, that's pretty cool technology, but they were expensive and I don't really have a use for that. Have you ever worked on a Caterpillar diesel? No. Mechanical two-stroke Detroit's. That's all I know. The only other diesel engine I've ever worked on is that Yanmar engine, which has got like a thousand hours on it since we rebuilt that. Nah, wait, somebody got mad I used the word rebuilt. Since we put it back together. <laughs> put a new piston rod in it and put that rusty thing together and got it running that everybody thought people were going to die in the boat with it or something, but it's still running. So, ha. Uh, being that you're in such high demand, is your son going to follow in your footsteps and get his own bus and hit the road? That'd be cool for him to do, but no, I don't think he's going to do that. Or at least not right now, maybe in the future. He, I don't think he likes the traveling part of it. He would, if he did more of it, I think he would, but has Lenny ever been stuck in mud or sand? No, not with me. Are you looking to ever make it to San Diego? Would love to check out Lenny. Yeah, I think this, this trip that coming up is gonna be, we're gonna be in San Diego, right? Or out that way, LA. I don't know if we're actually be in San so Diego. So maybe not San Diego, but Southern uh, California. Well, well, I think the one did say San Diego area. Okay. But when people tell us that, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But we, potentially, yes. I like it out there. Love San Diego. I would love to live there. She, yeah, she had us looking at property there a few years ago because her allergies don't bother her there at all. So we, everywhere we travel, they bother her. San Diego, she loves it. It makes her feel so good. Um, I was just going to say something else. I totally forgot what I was going to say. It wasn't important. Fingers fine. Are y'all coming down to Texas? Yes. Sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah. Will you get winter tires? No, I'm not driving in winter stuff. Praying I'm not driving in winter stuff. Oh, somebody asked about when you got stuck. I, my other bus, I got stuck parked in the grass one time and just it literally two inch hole you can get a bus stuck in. So you gotta watch it. Someone wants to know how you pick up bus chicks. You don't, cause I kick your ass. Pick up bus chicks. Really? Somebody Swear asked me. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
We've been married 26 years. Have you ever had a diesel engine run backwards? No, but they will. A two-stroke diesel will definitely run backwards. It says, if so, does it do damage? Um, I don't think it damages them. It's not pretty. What do you think of Cat 3208s? I know nothing about them. Except those are yellow. I think that I think they're yellow. Me and my wife have always worked together too. By the way, um, we had the photography studio since we got married, and so pretty much so our offices have either been in the same room and or we've been you know ten feet apart all day long every day. So for twenty six years married and always that close to each other, we get along really well. You still do photography other than video? No, not at all. Luke can get you anything for a silver size, right? No. He can get you a lot of things. Someone's asking if you can rescue a bus for them. And they just need to contact you. Yeah, contact me, send me an email, scott at busgreasemonkey.com and include something in the subject line saying, get on your schedule, bus rescue, something like that. Any word about the reproduction window, rubber, et cetera, for the PD3751? I bought the windshield rubber from Mark that he had reproduced and it is not exactly the same. Um, and I've had a few issues with it, um, but it's better than I think any other option that's out there. So the silver sides replacement stuff that, that Mark had everything. See, I think when you take a 70 year old piece of rubber into somebody and say, Hey, reproduce this for me. Well, over the 70 years, that piece of rubber has changed its dimensions. So I think there's an issue where things aren't exactly the same and like where the rivets are inside, they go all the way around the window. There's rivets every couple, probably like every inch all the way around there. And that's where I had the problem was that it wasn't perfectly wanting to go. So some dimension was off just a little bit and uh, I had to seal it with some extra stuff. Uh, is Kelly always going to be behind the camera? Better to see you both on a couch or something. Kelly will always be behind the camera. <laughs> no, she, right now she says that. We'll, we'll... No, no, no more. <sighs> See, you, so many ignorant people on the internet have ruined that. Uh, creepy people. Creepy people on the internet have ruined it. Are you coming to Arizona anytime soon? We're going, yeah, we'll be through Arizona. I think we have, yeah, we're, I want to go out and work on Juan's bus. Um, I don't have that list in front of me, but we do have at least one stop in Arizona. And yeah, we'll go. Maybe two stops, because um, Technomadia wanted us to maybe stop by and do something, too. I think they were going to be in Arizona when we were there. Okay. Why do you call your bus Lenny? Um, that's just his name. That's what we named him. We had another bus that was called Benny, and Benny and Lenny were brothers. So. And Benny had the name when we got him. Yes. Do you have a list of volunteers by state you can notify when you're in that state? No, if they just follow the channel, then they can reach out to me. Most of them just send me a text or something. Send me a message. When you bought Lenny, is there a video? No, I don't think so. I might have a little, little video clips here and there of something. I wish we would have had one. I wish we would have done it because Tyler was following me in the car. There were all kinds of things that I did wrong on that. Um, the radiator was coming apart, so we literally JB welded it together to hold fluid. And then coming down the road, the one air conditioner cover flew off and went right over Tyler. He was driving the BM, Kelly's BMW behind us. And that, it, that car is bad luck. <laughs> and then uh, it started overheating at one point. Um, and then one time the air filters completely plugged up. And so it was just black diesel smoke out the exhaust so much that you couldn't even see the highway behind me. Tyler was trying to follow me and it completely disappeared. Uh, and it just ended up being a bunch of like that cottonwood type stuff or something was all inside the air filter and we peeled it all off of there. And then we got going again and we made it, I had a bent rod smoking and, uh, but we made it home and 
uh, yeah, well, we had to drive at night. We couldn't make it at night because, oh, because I killed it like 10 times trying to go up this little hill. I used to drive a three on a tree and a, a pickup truck that I had in high school. So on three on a tree, first is what, uh, in and down. Well, in and down is second gear in a silver size. And just for some reason, my brain forgot that first was here. So I was trying to start out on a hill in second. I kept killing it, killing it, killing it. And then the battery was dead and I couldn't start it again. And that, that's when I realized I was putting in the wrong gear. And then, so we're using the BMW to jump the batteries on the silver sides. Uh, so then by then we, we were delayed and it was going to be nighttime. We got to drive at night. It had no working headlights on there. So we stopped and we bought headlights in a box that, you know, like the square beam headlights and we literally left them in the box and just hooked wired alligator clip wires to the back of them. And then we duct taped the boxes with the headlights in them to the bumper. And we drove it like that at night. And, and we were at a truck stop and a cop walks up next to us. And he's like, nice headlights. And he didn't say anything. And just that would have been, that was so hilarious. So we, it was a fun adventure, uh, father-son trip and the bus made it home fine. So, but yeah, there's no video of that, but I wish there was. There's, there's pictures of some of that stuff, but it was a fun trip. Plans? Uh, slash tour for the interior bus. Sorry if you've already answered this. There's a video up on the channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a tour of it. And I'll have to do a new one too we'll when, when we're done with all this. Now the kitchen's getting redone and this other stuff in there. But there is a tour. Um, is a one wheel anything like a Mattel big wheel? No. It's like a skateboard with a giant wheel in the middle of it. If you watch the Burning Man video that I did, there was a bunch of people. That's where I got introduced to them. I had never seen them before that. They were really cool. Do you own a Harley? No. We bought our son one. We bought Tyler one for his 17th birthday. That was our way to, uh, we told him it, it was, the title would stay in our name as long as he didn't uh, use tobacco or, you know, smoke and use tobacco. So that was our way of keeping him. A lot of his friends at that time were chewing and smoking and stuff. And so we bought him a brand new Harley for his 17th birthday, uh, uh, 883 iron when he was in high school. That's pretty cool. And he still have it. He still has it. Do you have a favorite brand? We should probably think about ending pretty soon. Yeah, just well, to... yeah. What do you pay for insurance on your bus? Mm, 300 and something dollars every six months, but that's liability only. I've not been able to find a company to do full coverage insurance on my bus. Um, so if anybody knows any. Yeah, if you, can find, if you know a company that'll do it for a do-it-yourself conversion, not a professional conversion, and that's a bus converted to an RV, uh, Progressive won't do it. Um, yeah. Farmers wouldn't do it. Um, I've called a whole bunch of them. But we have uh, National General. They won't even do it for that. Is there any vintage British bus you like? I don't know British buses very well. I mean, the whatever the two the double-decker ones that were the, the old style, those are really, really cool. Haggerty would not do RVs, but then uh, Sage just got his insured through Haggerty because they will now do campers. So I was going to reach out to them and see because I have Haggerty on my Volkswagen thing. Yep, and that was just the next question. You still have your VW thing. Yep. That's our date car. Does your driver's seat have an air spring? When folks come by to work, is that generally helpful? Yes, it's always helpful. When do you tell them to go away? I've never told them to go away. You might think it. I've never even thought it. I'm just kidding. They're, they're out there volunteering their time. They're learning. Um, there's always something. If I if they can't handle the mechanical side of what I'm asking them to do, um, then there's parts to clean or, you know, tools to clean up or whatever. And they're, they're, they're just, they want to be a part of it. I, I think too. Plus, they want to, a lot of them have buses. They want to learn about things, and they just want to help other people. That it's more the generosity of it. I think they just want to help somebody else out. I was just kidding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was laughing when I said, "Have you ever stopped into the Greyhound Museum in Hibbing, Minnesota?" Yeah, we did a bus rally there last year that we were at, and there's videos of it on our page. That's where we worked on that Diamond T up there too. Uh, I just saw another super chat from James Hayden again, James. 
that's, he's done several of them tonight, I think. Uh, in Australia, Greyhound ran flexibles for a while. Do flexibles have Detroits in them? Yes. Uh, and I've worked on several flexes. Uh, well, not all of them do. Um, he just, um, yeah, they, they don't all have Detroits in them. The, the older style flexes had, some of them had gas motors in them too. Um, and I just posted a link, I think tonight, on my community tab too, a friend that was selling a flexible. I think it had a Cummins in it or something. I don't remember what it was. It, it's not a Detroit though. But a lot of the other, the more modern, especially the stuff that got into like the new looks that they had, those were all uh, 71 series. Why did you go vegan? Uh, kidney stones. I had massive kidney stones. I had always had issues with kidney stones and then um, was very used to having kidney stones. And then, yeah, then I had massive pain, didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. Didn't ever think it was a kidney stone and went to the doctor, this is more information that you want to know. And then he told me that I had 4.5 centimeter kidney stones. And I thought, well, 4.5, that's not bad. I just thinking that I've passed, you know, like eight millimeter kidney stones before or whatever. Um, but didn't catch on to the fact that he said centimeter. So we're talking like golf ball size. Um, so they had to go surgery through my back and uh, remove them from, it was both kidneys and it was horrible. And you were out for months. Yeah, I was out for months. Um, it was, it was not fun. And, and then I had heard, the, it, the benefits of, of being vegan and, and blood pressure is normal and all kinds of stuff. I, if it wasn't for carbs, I'd be really skinny, just so you know, but um, I do eat really, really healthy. Okay, I think I'm starting to get caught up here. Man, this is like the ever longest live of, thing ever. I ever can't. thought of opening a bus garage? and have people come to you. Oh, God, I just love the traveling part of what I, I get to do. I saying we need to do that for at least part of a year. Travel part of a year and be home for part When of I get year. sick and tired of traveling, then I will maybe. But I really enjoy the traveling and meeting people and going to new locations and checking things out and, I just, and, and living on our bus and it's fun. Um, I really like that. Do you like the schoolie buses? Uh, yes, I love crowns, especially. They're like my favorite, favorite schoolie. And the Gilligs and stuff like that, too. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a highway coach snob. Um, I, I, I like all buses. Um, I probably like older buses, period. I don't really care for gassers on anything, usually. Um, but yeah, no, you could give me a crown with a 671 in it. I think that's cool as can be. Is there any Hay Lance merchandise available yet? Yeah, it's on the, it's on the, um, what do you have on there? Like cell phone backs and coffee mugs and t-shirts? And sweatshirts. Sweatshirts. Short sleeve shirts, long sleeve. Yep, it's yep. on, go to our uh, Teespring uh, site. Click on the merch shelf, should be able to see it right where you're at. It should be below the video or something. Um, what's the best vintage? Well, anything has style in the design to it before things got turned to plastic and fiberglass. Somebody said they ordered their Helian shirt yesterday. <laughs> Do you run the Instapot on the batteries? No. And inverter, no. no. No, yeah, we run it either off the generator or off of power where we're plugged in at. Batteries don't like running things that are uh, resistance heat. Uh, it's just not good for, I don't wanna do that to my batteries. But someone says breakfast without bacon is just sad. There's all kinds of vegan bacon. Man, I have some vegan bacon that's really good, yeah. I mean, it's not exactly the same. But she she makes her own vegan bacon out of coconut and stuff like that, and it I actually love it. It's I'll make a BLT out of it, and it's good. Someone is telling me that I need to start a YouTube channel. She should the the stuff that she made. I, no, because I don't want to be on the camera. She doesn't want to be on camera. Oh. The say this person saying that his wife is vegan, it's hard to cook something good for her. I just went online and started searching for things that we used to love to eat and how do I make it vegan? 
and I love to cook and I just I always went followed recipes to start with exactly the way it was and then I would just tweak it to where we liked it so maybe I'll have start, Scott start doing just little videos of his breakfast lunch and dinner or something Somebody just asked about when your back started hurting, did you consider that your body was saying, hey, Lance? Yeah, which is actually very ironic because Lance has kidney stone issues too. And his poor daughter. And his poor daughter. She's been in the hospital just last week with kidney stones. I, she's a teenager. Uh, this just jumped me way ahead again. Yeah, we need to probably think about signing off tonight, I think. Yeah, because my computer's ready to die. Yeah, it's been a long night. You guys had a lot of questions. I appreciate you for tuning in and watching us. and. I feel really bad if we didn't get to your questions, so maybe we'll do this again while we're home or whatever. But uh, uh, if not, maybe one night when we're up in Minnesota, as long as as long as our Verizon is working good for us. And yeah. Switched. Hopefully, our Verizon will work up there. Plus, we should have we'll have the new booster hooked up too. Um, so maybe we can, we can do a couple nights up there. Yeah, we'll be in Bloomington, Minnesota. So that's where we're gonna be at up at uh, uh, Rochester Bus Lines. Is that the name of that? That's Richfield Bus Richfield Company. Bus Company. That's what it is. Sorry, they own a couple of companies. I forget what they're called. But yeah, Richfield Bus Company in Bloomington, Minnesota, I believe is where we're at. We done? Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, the Super Chat people, too. Thank you very much. That was fun. Good night, everybody. <laughs>